But we're not here to talk about Megadeth. We're here to talk about bands not really influenced by Megadeth, but maybe like the kind of slightly, oh, slightly, you know? Yeah, def definitely. Yeah. They could you know, be. Of all, of all the, of all the, of all the thrash titans, Megadeth is definitely the most like heavy metally feeling. -y. Well, they're they're also like on that verge between, you know getting into speed metal and like new wave traditional heavy metal is definitely like thrash metal, speed metal, traditional yeah. heavy metal, doom metal. But yeah. Yeah. There we go. Look Power at this. Metal. Look at this segue we're doing. Beautiful segue. Beautiful segue. So you're obviously, yeah. you know, uh, you, you, uh, you, you're obviously, I think, I think probably I, I, we could, if you, if you were on TV, it could, if you're on CNN for this, it could be like foremost expert in her field, <laughs> Sarah on New Wave of Traditional Heavy Metal. Uh, so why don't you, uh, you know, why don't you, you know, just in case there's anybody in the chat that's, uh, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's a big acronym. Uh, what, how would you, little elevator pitch, little sum up of the genre, how would you present it to somebody? Oh, geez. Yeah, it's a hard one. Um, so new wave of traditional heavy metal is heavy metal that aims to emulate traditional heavy metal. And that means underneath the genre umbrella of power metal, speed metal, thrash metal, doom metal, and classic metal. Uh, it, it's definitely, I think personally that it started to really gain ground around 2005, but then it started really actually peaking in popularity after the thrash revival so there was like the flip hat pizza thrash movement that kind of happened and it kind of ended around 2012 and at that point like the new wave of traditional heavy metal started really taking foot and around that time that's when we were seeing tons of bands actually getting more mainstream um, metal coverage um, and the movement as I said probably started around 2005 2006 we were looking at some Canadian bands like Cauldron who came from Coat Horn and then uh you know bands like Ambush and things like that so or and Skullfist which is a Canadian band but um yeah there's there's a lot of arguable beginning points for the new wave of traditional heavy metal and there's also a lot of ways that we could define it so I'm kind of eager to see like what people how people want to define it because at least from what i'm seeing now i think it's now being finally acknowledged as a musical movement but the way that i personally conceptualized it and the way that i was covering it as a journalist back in like 2014 obviously was different because at that point it wasn't even being defined really as like a movement it was starting to kind of conceptualize and crystallize um and yeah it's really interesting to see all these new wave of traditional heavy metal lists uh, getting published in all these magazines now because I was writing those lists ten years ago, and Sarah's now I'm always seeing... right. Sarah's always yeah. ten years early on all this. Like I was writing those lists ten years ago, and now I see all these lists, and I'm a lot of them. I'm kind of like, you know, it seems like uh, a lot of the metal media has kind of skipped over the fact that this genre is really exciting because it's diverse, and they're always picking bands that sound the exact fucking same, and it's so boring. Um, so there's that part of it that I don't necessarily like, but you know, we see, uh, I think one of the biggest champions of the movement is, uh, Anderson. He's the guy who does the new wave of traditional heavy metal, uh, YouTube channel. Yeah. He's a really good friend of mine. Like we stayed with him, um, at a few festivals, like we've all shared a hotel room and stuff. And he's got a really nice broad view of what the new wave of traditional heavy metal looks like. And I personally have also kind of adopted that, that view just because, you know, more diversity in music means more interesting bands, means yeah. higher quality, means, yeah, all those things. So yeah. that was a bit of a ramble. Sorry. <laughs> no, that, no, that is exactly what uh, that is exactly what I wanted. And it's, uh, you know, it's, this has been a thing that uh, literally every stream this has come up. And I didn't really think about this is uh, I think a really good point you made is that that it because we keep talking about how like thrash is kind of dead. <laughs> like no one makes thrash albums anymore. And it's interesting that you kind of defined it as, as you know, there was, there was that thrash revival at the early two thousands. And then we get the, 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 the new wave of traditional heavy metal, ah, new wave of traditional heavy metal revival going on now. And it does. Yeah. You can really see like a thrash goes down. This goes up. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean musical movements are always cyclical, right? Yeah. Like, even just like I've been covering metal now for 20, oh my God, 21 years. Um, and in the last 21 years, like when I started covering heavy metal, like writing about heavy metal uh, for like local uh, blogs and magazines and stuff, the biggest thing was like tech threat or tech death. 
So at that point, it was like, oh, yeah, like the suffocation style shit was huge. And then it was like, OK, and then we're getting into like that extreme kind of like tech death. And as I've kind of watched like the different waves of metal, obviously multiple like different scenes can happen simultaneously. But I think like right now, the overwhelming sentiment within heavy metal is people are like craving kind of more old school sounds. Yeah. So like you see that in like the, you know, like old school death metal, like OSDM obviously huge i mean black metal has always been like a traditionalist revivalist scene um but definitely like embraces that kind of style sound aesthetic but yeah thrash is an interesting one because it had such a huge movement like a revivalist movement at the you know about 2005 to about 2014 and i do think that it definitely set the the groundwork for what's happening in the new wave of traditional heavy metal now I'm just surprised personally that with like new wave traditional heavy metal, the main genre that like nobody seems to want to embrace that nobody's really talking about that all of us are is power metal. Yeah. But it's yeah. like, it's U S power metal. So it's not Euro power metal because like there's kind of this worldwide conception that like Euro power metal, it's a little more cheesy. It's a little more grandiose. There's more puffy shirts. There's more like, you know, blow dryers and music videos, like those kinds of things. And those don't have to be inherently bad, but it does feel like a lot of people are not really acknowledging like power metals roots in or power metals influence on the new wave of traditional heavy metal. Yeah. Cause a lot of like what we're all playing is very strongly rooted both in early European power metal, which obviously is like the Halloween, the scanners, the blind guardians. Um, and then of course USPM because the new wave of traditional heavy metal huge in the United States. Yeah. Like, absolutely huge oh yeah so, yeah i mean it's yeah. it's it's weird that you know coming up with a list of band it's almost the the exclusive list is almost sweden california canada <laughs> is like the is like well, the three big well germany too like yeah. germany i think is is a really important one because like germany has always been one of the biggest music markets in the world um and true metal and greece too like true metal thrives in germany yeah. and greece like we do have to talk about obviously the importance of both up the hammers and keep it true. Those two festivals, like those two festivals have really worked hand in hand with the revival of the new wave of traditional heavy metal. And they've given bands from all over the world, like a, you know, like a, a, a marking point, like my band has made it when I get invited to play one of yeah. these festivals. Yeah, and sure. I think that for almost everyone, like that is the demarker, you know? Yeah. yeah. So. And the power metal roots, is, I put the, I put the link to your, article the band's already been mentioned a couple times i mean definitely one of the bands we're going to talk about most is 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 visigoth and they are the probably the most like almost explicitly power metal of maybe any band we're going to talk about today yeah yeah Uh, we had an interesting an interesting debate started here a little bit um (laughs) uh, count scotula uh or wait sorry not Count. where was it uh deadpan uh our ghost new wave of traditional heavy metal at least on their first album, potentially. I feel like that's that there is a compelling argument to be made for that, especially because before Ghost really turned pop, the Metal Underground really embraced them. Yeah. And Opus Eponymous is essentially a Blue Oyster Cult album. Yeah. And I would say that Blue Oyster Cult obviously very heavily influenced the new wave of traditional heavy metal. Like, yeah. And it's funny to see the blowback against Ghost because, like, I personally don't like their new sound, but I loved Opus Eponymous. Yeah. I was at their first show in North America at Maryland Death Fest in, Me like, too. 2011, 2012. 2011. Yep. People were going fucking bonkers. Yeah. Like, no one, no like, one was complaining the there. Feeling, like, we're all singing along. It was a great time. Um, mm-hmm. But then they've kind of become, you know, you know how metalheads are. They hate things yeah. when they get popular. So, um, and, you know, that, that has changed, yes. you know, somewhat. <laughs> people don't really like but personally i i do think that they could there's an argument for inclusion there because they definitely um they play like classic heavy metal with pop structures and melodies which are important parts of trad metal like the new wave heavy metal yeah i mean it definitely seems like the 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 there's a bit of revisionist history i always feel with oh, with ghost because yeah just just <laughs> just being at maryland death fest that year is like no one was bummed no one was like no one get the fuck at these guys and you even know? at that point none of us knew about like the repugnant connection yeah. and then when we started figuring out we were like oh my god that's amazing because like repugnant was fucking sick yeah and then it was like oh actually i hate them because now they yeah. make money off their music yeah you and know? it was and funny because i mean they weren't even that like serious about the about the like 
anonymous nature of the band i remember at that show just seeing them like at the side of the stage like doing their amps like completely out of costume and then they played and then they put stuff on it was like it was it it was kind of just a casual thing and then they blew up and then ran with well, it. well i think it, it was part of the marketing gimmick you know what i mean like yeah. it, it and and that's obviously borrowed from black metal and it also makes sense because like anonymity like if you get famous like it's kind of it kind of sucks like it sucks to have everyone recognize you and it sucks to have everyone interrupt you at like inappropriate times and stuff. So I understand like the drive behind it. <coughs> yeah. Damn. People be tripping Tom Hanks's wife. Sorry. What? I don't <laughs> Sorry, know what that there means. Was just a, there was just a video the other day on the internet where <laughs> Tom Hanks and like his wife were leaving like uh, uh, a restaurant and a bunch of people were taking photos. And then one guy like kind of like put his like arm around his wife and Tom Hanks's wife, uh, tripped and tommy was like i think it's maybe like the first time i've ever heard tom hanks swear tom hanks just going back the fuck up that's my way back up <laughs> you're like damn that sounds me. horrible um yeah. yeah like that kind of stuff it yeah i mean c considering how big ghost has gotten now it's yeah. probably in that guy's best interest that not everyone in the world knows what his face looks yeah. like because it sucks like when you're in a flight, like, you don't want to be yeah. talked at by a total stranger for, like, your entire day, like, when you just need personal time, you know? Yeah, especially so, when yeah. you're, like, in, there's, like, a level of fame that where it sucks, where it's, like, the ghost is big enough that he would get recognized everywhere, but, like, yeah. not big enough that it comes with, like, all the beautiful perks of that. It's not like he could just, like, walk into a restaurant yeah. and eat for free. He would just walk into a restaurant and have an awkward meal because a bunch of weird dudes would want to talk to him. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, so, I mean, that's an interesting, look at that, look at that, we're already getting debate, we're already getting going on. Yeah, Ghost, Ghost is, I mean, I didn't even consider it, I would have loaded some Ghost stuff, I would have loaded photos from that show um, that I have, but yeah. Uh, you've never liked Ghost? You, you tried? Yeah, well, I mean, it's also hard to like, I feel like it would be hard to like Ghost now, because it comes all this baggage, even trying to listen to the first album, but yeah, man, the first yeah. album was a banger, everyone was stoked. It wasn't until after that everybody, it wasn't until the second album where people went, hey, wait a minute, this isn't the direction I wanted you to go. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. But and yeah, I mean, when, when that album came out, though, it felt really fresh. Yeah. It felt yeah. fresh, and it felt poppy, and you know, I think at that time too, like, especially because there was so much brutality and heavy metal around that 2005 to like 2010 period. And we were yeah. coming out of, you know, the nineties, which were the decade of extreme metal. Yeah. Like that was the, that was the entire thing that everybody was listening to in the nineties. Like that's when, you know, like there was, there was that massive like growth and then all the major labels started like gobbling everyone up and all that other stuff. And then we started getting like more and more hyper, like, hyper technical death metal and thrash and all that other kind of stuff so it felt very refreshing to have like this simple like sing-along band yeah that wrote about satan and did it in this like fun compelling way yeah and everybody at the time it felt like everyone was really stoked on it and then all of a sudden like the backlash was like pretty pretty swift yeah. which yeah. was interesting <laughs> yeah but i mean if we can if we can credit them a bit for what's i i mean metal monthly every month i find uh you know uh, a, a really solid heavy metal it's not there's there's been a couple of months where it's been hard but like it's been really easy for i think i've been doing that show like almost four years like every every month um, boom as on the end as a bullet point the the, the palette cleanse is a heavy metal album and and it's it's yeah, there's there's always like it's not even that i like i'm like okay here's the heavy metal album it's like oh which one do i oh but i like oh can i put them oh, no i'm trying to keep it uh. yeah it's a wellspring right now yeah. there's really there's a lot of really good creative things going on yeah I so. mean, you know uh, a lot of the bands i pulled up to talk which uh which you'll have some things to say about um <laughs> you know the amount of them where it's like 2017 2017 2016 2017 2017 2018 2019 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. yeah yeah it's been a, yeah so been where are we gonna years. start then are we gonna start at 2005 well, well, what we could do, the, the place we normally start is, so so if, if something comes up and it doesn't fit, it's a little too early or whatever, we can toss it in proto. The thing we normally start is, is figuring out the legend, the kind of like, of this movement, the, uh, the, the kind of biggest record that really defined it, um, that we think, you know, is if someone said, hey, one, one record to explain this all to me, what would it be? And, uh, and what's your, what would you say that album is? I mean, I feel like it's a really obvious answer, but I think yeah. almost everyone would probably agree that like the pinnacle was Eternal Champions, Armor of Ire. 
Like so oh, far. Okay. Okay. All right. All like, right. For, all right. For new wave of traditional heavy metal itself. All right. All right. Like all I do right. think other albums rival that, but given that that came out in I think it was 2016. Yeah. And that was to me when the movement really started taking off, and there was a lot of like albums that were coming out, but that one like really kind of like typified or I guess like typecast the genre. It made it about like you know. Yeah. burly fantasy i mean of course there's tons of new wave of traditional heavy metal that i don't really count within the genre because i think eternal champion at its core i would never say their genre is new wave of traditional heavy metal i would call them epic heavy yeah, metal absolutely and that's the same way that i feel about atlantean codex that's what i call like my own band smolder like we're all epic metal bands but we fall within the new wave of traditional heavy metal banner yeah you know like overarching underarching kind of thing um but yeah that's the one that i think for a lot of people made them really take notice yeah. of the genre itself. And uh, I think there's a reason why the response to their second album was so intense. Yeah. And it's because I think for a lot of people, they really represent this genre. Yeah. I think the, 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 the and the thing that really kind of speaks to how good they are is that, yeah, they're not really heavy metal. They're epic heavy metal and epic heavy metal is a lot harder of a sell to move some serious units with because it i mean the the thing they kind of sidestep i think a little bit is somehow they do epic heavy metal without any really the, the nerdiness or the cheesiness they kind of manage to dodge that a lot better than a lot of epic heavy metal bands i think well i mean who else would you classify as an epic heavy metal band uh i don't know <laughs> i mean well, so i mean well okay, so, Dio, we, were, like, we were talking about you know something like something like uh 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 megaton, my nose. megaton sword we were talking <sighs> we were talking about earlier you know uh yeah. that's that's an epic heavy metal band that i think is harder to sell to people than eternal champion because it does feel a little like it feels like there's a little bit more D D. there's a little bit more nerd you kind of need to be involved in that you need to kind of feel I mean, that I, but like, cause I, I feel like the same, th that the, the same thing happens with the turtle or with, uh, Atlantean codex and with smolder, like the nerdiness is inherent in the music because the people who are making the music, that's their lives. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And I think that the reason why that album and albums by like bands with generally within Epic heavy metal, like they are very much like put on a pedestal. Cause if you look back, like Epic metal personally, I think started with like, rainbow like rainbow rising is like the ultimate epic heavy metal album you listen to that and like you listen to fucking stargazer and you're like i can stand on top of a mountain i can jump off a cliff and i'm gonna like go into the water with my sword and i'm gonna like catch a fish and then i'm gonna like you know steal a mermaid and like it's just ridiculous right like yeah. that personally i think like stargazer is like the best song of all time but that to me is like really where that genre comes from it's like the epic soaring vocals really strong songwriting you know like there's a there's also because epic heavy metal to me is exciting because it doesn't care so much about the genre constraints and that is one of my main concerns with the new wave of traditional heavy metal is a lot of bands end up sounding super samey because they think that everything needs to sound like painkiller era judas priest and I'm like, that is not the case. Like you can go into multiple subgenres of heavy metal and do it in a like cohesive way, as long as you're a good songwriter and you're not like forcing, you know, you're not doing like genre Jenga, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And Epic Heavy Metal, I think really wins at that because the people who generally get pegged into Epic Heavy Metal, generally it's because they're really good songwriters yeah. and they've, they've learned this way to like put, you know, have long songs and like put flow and emphasis and like beauty into their music in a way that feels quite unusual and striking. Yeah, I, I think maybe maybe it's a little bit also in the the a thing a, a minor quality I associate with with epic heavy metal is the vocals tend to be a little nasally. <laughs> and yeah. Eternal Champion doesn't ha quite have the nasally vocals. And I think just that little tweak is like what goes from like, I'm in the woods with a sword. You can definitely go into the woods with a sword with Eternal Champion. But I feel like there's like dudes like listen to Eternal Champion and are like, well, now I'm going to go power lift. You know, there's also that energy to it a little bit. It kind of, it's, it's not even, it's not even more like macho. It's just like more like, uh, yeah, it's just a little, little bassier, you know, a little, a little, uh, uh, a little more oomph that kind of, I think is why it's been able to be kind of accepted by so many people that you wouldn't necessarily expect to be like, you know, rocking an eternal champion t-shirt. Um, 
I mean, I kind of find them a bit nasally, but I think it's because vo- Jason's vocals are double tracked. Yeah. And that gives them that echoing quality. Yeah. And because they sound so unusual and because they're like coming from a very specific era of like USPM and like Queens, right. Kind of stuff. But Jason's got a different set of pipes. And I think that that kind of works in the context of like what yeah. they're going for. So it, it, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think one of the most important parts, the new wave traditional heavy metal, it's like, it doesn't have to be dizzyingly technical or anything like that. It's that people have to just put their heart and soul into it. Like you don't necessarily have to be technically super proficient, obviously yeah. some technicality, but as long as you're like really giving it your all, that's what matters. And I think with him, just because he's like everyone who's seen him live, he's imposing dude is big. Like his neck is like the size of my torso. Like he's a lot. He's Got a the corpse grinder like, neck going on. Yeah. He's a blacksmith. He's clearly very, he's barrel chested. <laughs> he looks like a fucking Conan painting. Like he's a big dude. And like, you know, the, uh, the person on that cover, I know it's not him. I've asked him if it's him, but that's fucking him. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know? Totally. Like, yeah. He's got that like beefcake, like <laughs> thing yeah. going on. And there's so. a couple people in the chat. Pretty, pretty happy about the, 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 the Dio, uh, the Dio reference, uh, dust tree stargazers unmatched. Hell yeah. Der Ge- Beer Kaiser giving us a hundred bits for the rainbow rising. Nebulous Prowler could not agree more about stargazer sweet Dio shirt. Hell yeah. <laughs> and then Deadpan gave Jason a homemade doom sword patch after they're set at Hell's Heroes in, in April. Right. Amazing moment. Nice. And then we got some corpse grinder emotes in the chat. Hell yeah. Big necks, <laughs> baby. Big necks. Yeah. So, I mean, Eternal Champion is pretty, pretty easy pick. Uh, and, yeah. and we don't need to, I think we can sidestep the debate about whether the, the most recent album is better because uh, uh, despite the fact that the cover makes me want to fucking throw up. <laughs> I'm uh, talking about you don't love huge titties, Blaine. <laughs> Damn, but yeah, that, I get it. What happened, where that girl's arms at? What happened to that girl's arms? I don't know. The arms go? Torso, the disembodied torso, where she's like, yeah, it's, it's a little Damn. strange. I, I mean, get... I understand. Like, I've, I've, I've interviewed the band about it and asked them about it. And, you know, I understand, like, where they're coming from. But yeah. I also. Um, yeah i'm just like, being ableist i guess i just hate the album <laughs> cover because i'm ableist <laughs> well i mean i mean that's as good of a time as any to before we uh go too hard it's like you know that was a ken kelly painting it was probably yeah. one of the last like album covers that he did before he passed away dude had a immeasurably huge impact on heavy yeah. metal you know so th- there's a lineage there that i understand yeah. oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, even yeah. if i'm not like really pumped on it you know <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i like yeah no 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 disrespect to him as an artist uh he's done some amazing things it just felt like this one was like do you have any album art and he was like uh i mean you could have this <laughs> no it's based on it's based on the book that jason wrote the god blade I know. which he did for dmr books which uh i featured them like years ago and we have had videos together blaine <laughs> have we <laughs> yes yeah we did um oh god when you said that you've been doing uh lock or not lock horns god oh my goodness gracious i'm tired all the time uh when you told me that you have been doing uh metal monthly for four years i was like i thought about it because i've been a banger now for almost for over six years now and that felt very strange long time yeah long time we did something together. Did something I think we together. done like, I think, two videos or something. I think maybe it was like, yeah, we were doing like top, like what we missed or top 10 or something like that. Yeah. I just mean we, we mostly I feel that I, I missed out because I, I, uh, it was, uh, I never got to like pile drive an album with you. Just tag you, Blaine, Blaine and Sarah tag team. <laughs> okay. We can pile drive everything right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dear beer Kaiser, you're right. Limbless women can be abducted too. Um, I, sh- I need to check my privilege. <laughs> um, no, I mean that is based on the book. It's it, it's good. It's, you should check it out. <laughs> the book's good. Like, the album yeah. interior is good, and yeah. but we can just sidestep that because you yeah. know, uh, regardless of what album you think is better, certainly the impact is uh, yes. of the first album is definitely much more intense uh, uh, and kind of you know is is what allowed them to be now catapulted to uh to new levels of fame and stardom um yeah so that's a great so it's funny you were saying that you when you were like when you're doing you're like i there's no debate it's pretty easy but but uh eternal champion i'm like oh that's very much right uh for me i i, I thought you were gonna say i thought you were gonna say visigoth though poison i like visigoth they're wonderful but I, this album came out before the revenant king did and i personally listen in to it a lot more uh 
Did it win? It didn't. I don't think. No. No. Eternal Champion 2016, The Revenant King 2015. Are we sure? Who is uh, it? I I I <laughs> am sure, but also I, I am will sure. I will not. I I I never want to explicitly. Oh tell right, them. yeah. Okay, yeah. So Revenant King was 2015. So that meant that. Okay. So I thought for some reason. Okay. So I got into Eternal Champion before Visigoth because yeah. the first thing that they um that I got that from them they put out was that uh, little seven inch. I think it was the the last King of Picton seven inch. Last King of Picton. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what it's called. But there was like a cassette, and then there was a um. Yeah, The Last King of Picton. Oh, so that's their demo from 2013. And then they did the Retaliator um, Vengeance um, single. And then they did the album in 2016. And so, yeah. But yeah. I mean, I think I think Visigoth definitely could be in the, in the Legend or in the Essential. The Revenant King is a great album. Yeah. When the guys did their first tour for that album right after they had been signed to Metal Blade... I contacted Jake and I was just like, yo, dude, you're making really sick music. I really dig your vibe. And he was like, oh, well, we're coming to Canada for a tour. And I ended up booking them for a show at the end of their tour. And they ended up staying with me for like three or four nights at the end of their tour. And I booked them for a gig at this tiny little venue in Calgary called Broken City. Okay, and like sweet. 150 people came. It was packed. They had a great time. Like they're still good buds to this day. And like, yeah, I absolutely love Jake. I think he's like one of the nicest dudes in the entire metal universe. <laughs> but yeah. Arthur is too. Arthur, the uh, a member of Eternal Champion, but obviously he mixed and mastered um, our album. So, yeah, this is a world in which I have a lot of uh, connections. <laughs> Boy, it's it's almost like I should ask you to be on an episode of uh, Lockhorns for New Age Traditional Heavy Metal as some kind of expert in the field. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, Return of the King are essential, uh, uh, but it's a little too bloated to be a legend. Eternal Champion gets their point across in just over half the time. Deadpan. That's a fair point. I mean, there's also the fact that, because like, you know, if we're talking about proto, this is a very good segue into proto stuff. Because to me, like, we're going to talk a lot about American bands and the yeah. proto band for this genre is going to be Manila Road. And of course, there is a cover of Manila Road on The Revenant King. And I remember when they were released that album, I was like, oh, that's bold. Like, you put a cover on the album. I, I always think it's a bit interesting when bands do that. Yeah. I always think it's like EP, qual or EP material yeah. instead of album material. But that's neither here nor there. But obviously, like, that's, I agree with that assessment. Like, yeah. there is a little bit of it that is a little too bloated. Whereas, right. like, the Eternal Champion, like, it's a short record. It's, what, 37 minutes? As soon as it's done, you're like, well, better listen to that again. Like, <laughs> All right. Well, we can, we can put a poll to the chat. We can put a poll to the chat. We'll see. Legend, Eternal Champion, Visigoth, or both. We can, we can, we can, we can have two legends. We can have two well, legends. Well, I mean, if we're really truly talking about like legends, like how, uh, how, how proto do we go in proto? Like in proto, are we gonna put Cauldron and Goathorn and um, shoot, what's that? Skullfist, or are we gonna put Manila Road, Rainbow, and that's gonna Lion? Be, yeah, that's gonna be more <laughs> that kind of thing. That's for okay. that's for when we acknowledge something. But like, yeah, no, Cauldron feels like Cauldron is, you know, uh, Cauldron's gonna go on, you know, spoiler. I, I'm gonna push pretty hard for Cauldron to be on the essential list. Um, yeah. So we got a poll in the chat. Ooh, who's our legend? Oop, I spelled, <laughs> I got cut off. It says, who's our legend? With no D. So uh, you can vote both. You can vote Visigoth. You can vote Eternal Champion. Um, uh, uh, we can we can see how the chat feels. This is the chat is our useful uh, our our our, uh, our scales of justice, our sword of Damocles, and uh, uh, is. You mean Stormbringer? <laughs> so, oh, currently we're close. We're close. Eternal Champion with ten, Visigoth with two, both with fifteen. So, <laughs> so there you go. There you go. So. So, you know, uh, and, you know, it feels like a good place to start. I mean, Visigoth's just such a, again, you're talking about how, like, a lot of bands can sound the same, and Visigoth is definitely not a band that sounds the same to a lot of these. The one most willing to fully, to fully grab power metal and, 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 and shake it out oh, yeah. in front of everybody, for everybody Jake to see. Jake has an absolutely magnificent voice. And, like, the dueling guitars. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, it's the, it's the, it's the, uh, 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 what was it? Um, uh, Grant was saying that, like, it's not power metal if there's not two guitars. Like, what's the point of even listening to power metal if there's only one guitar on it? <laughs> and yeah, I mean, Visigoth, perfect example of that kind of set. Oh, damn, this is, this, this is close. Eternal Champion with 18, both with 19 is the current voting. Visigoth with three. So definitely Visigoth not beating Eternal Champion. Um, but but the both, we're making a case for both, which I which I think, you know, it's it, we generally wind up with two in the legend. And it feels kind of like it's a good, it's a good kind of, there are good two to have up there because it, it sets a nice well, little bedrock. I mean, if we're talking about the most, imp oh yeah, there's so, oh, sorry, getting ahead of myself. Get I'm excited, like, that's what we want. Yeah, the other that's rhythms, want. like, yeah. I'm thinking of like Portrait. Portrait, Portrait. Yeah. or like um, in hey. solitude, or um, you know, like yeah. I mean, yeah, this totally. one. I mean, hey, the... hey, we can talk. We can talk about literally any of those records <laughs> and all of those records. That's what we're here to do. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Pinky the Ant, you're a paid agent for Eternal Champion. They give you Pringles. Uh, Dark Lord <laughs> Fabio, I think it's completely acceptable to have multiple legends. Some artists and some albums are just that important or influential. They need to both be acknowledged. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, 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 Fish Cult in Solitude. Yep, we're going to... That's. Don't worry, that's on my list. You, you might have seen their cover down below. So both won 24, 24 to 18 with both. So we're keeping both. I'm happy. Yep. You're happy. Um, I mean, there's a, there's a the chat seems to have really perked their ears up uh, when they heard in Solitude. Um, <laughs> so maybe that's the next... Maybe that's the next thing we're talking about. Sure. Shift to in solitude, which I mean, again, we're start we're starting off good when we're saying that you know the problem with this genre is things can sound a little bit alike, and then look at this: the first three albums we're talking about do not sound alike. Three very different albums. Uh, in solitude, kicking things off again, very very uh, very uh, early early album in the in the movement we're talking about, 2013, and. Um, uh, very, well, very different. Their, right? their first album came out in 2008. Yeah. In yes. Solitude. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But I feel like Sister, probably we're talking about Sister today because it feels like the the kind of the, the, the big, the big, the big best. I don't know. Slap. I think it's really? in Solitude, no. personally. I mean, I know that people argue about that, but like, yeah, I, I, I personally like the first one, but only because, well, not only because, but I just, I want to think about Sweden as like being an important part of new wave traditional heavy metal. Like, because the scene there is also like very big, yeah. and like portraits yeah. also from there, and like there's you know Brofest and like just just things going on that I'm like, yeah, Sweden. Like we have to acknowledge yeah. Sweden. Oh, and... I I feel like Sweden's gonna yeah. Sweden's gonna be thoroughly fluffed by the end. Of this. <laughs> <laughs> really fluffed. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, you know, we've got we've got we've got some argument going on. So deadpan deadpan going with the world of flesh, the devil. Me going with sister. Uh, uh, you going with uh, in solitude. It's a it's an exciting argument to have. Certainly, uh, sister has a bit too much poach punk to be relevant here. Uh, sister is a little too goth. Chris Bazaar. Um, I don't know. For me, that's kind of why I why I that was the one that I I, I picked because it's like it does the the cool thing about Sister is that it kind of has uh, uh, the ability to create a somber atmosphere while still being a, a generally not slow record. Like they can they they're doing that less through tempo it's not like the doom is not coming from tempo the doom's coming from just like the atmosphere the create the vibe the tone yeah the but if we think about this another way think about how much in solitude impacted like this new post-punk wave of heavy metal which is now like idle hands yeah. or um on to others yeah like i would say that they <laughs> just, had a very let's big... just stick with idle hands on to others is such a bad thing <laughs> well <laughs> It's neither here nor there. They, they, they had to do it, um, yeah. and and I'm really happy for them and for their success because those dudes work really hard. Um, but they are emblematic of like a a kind of like fun little new alternative metal universe where people are like, hell yeah, I love Sisters of Mercy and Tears for Fears, and yeah. like those two bands are fucking sick. And I think that in solitude, like with their third album, and then with like a lot of the other things that were happening in Sweden at the time, with like you know, all the like beast milk kind of like dark rock bands like that then turned into that movement. Yeah. And it, so, yeah, I would say that like, yeah, the in solitude is a lot more like trad metal, a lot more driving, a lot more like 
it's got that that pulsating kind of like energy and vibe and i i would put it it's it's very similar um thematically it fits like a sister record with like the portrait so all right well this is so so we got different votes from from you and i for for what album um i'm adding i'm adding i'm adding the cover to the collection and then and hey this is another opportunity this i i we love our polls around here love giving the chat the opportunity to make the hard decisions for us so uh uh, uh we can just we can just uh we can just toss this to we can just toss this to them we can toss this to the folks in the chat to make up our decision for us um because that's they're they're our tiebreaker they're our, they're they are the decider um, <laughs> So in solitude, do you got in solitude or sister? That's the ones we're talking about. Screw you, deadpan, suck it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, get your votes in. Who, which one are we going with? Which one are we going with? What is the sister album? I'm clueless. It's by a band called In Solitude, Chris. Uh, they're from Sweden. They're a heavy metal band that, yeah, kind of. I think you'd really like them. You're a big Sisters of Mercy fan, Chris. Uh, it's definitely up your alley, um, uh, especially sister. I think. Damn, in solitude, whooping my butt. They're just happy you're back, so they're going with you. <laughs> or maybe I'm just the genre expert. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you're the favorite parent. You're the favorite parent. <laughs> Sator, I love the Significant Point t-shirt on my Insta. It was my number one album of the year. Hell yeah. This is, I mean, you know, I, I, I love I love some I love some wild Japanese vocals. Uh, uh, it's well, and also wild guitars. Wild guitars, really? wild vocals. I mean, like, Dying Victims on a fucking roll the last couple of years with uh trat or with new wave traditional heavy metal yeah. stuff yeah like absolutely killing it so it's it's, it's i, I can, talk to you florian <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely i can just go like uh let's just go to their band camp and 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 see what uh what heavy metal album i'm picking <laughs> this month yeah exactly dying victims is killing it yeah yeah i uh i was i wish that animal eyes album had a nicer cover <laughs> I forgot about that record. Yeah, <laughs> it's such a it was such a fun album. But that cover so stupid. I mean, it's definitely got like wasp vibes, yeah. and that's yeah. okay. Fish cult, one hundred and two bits. Blaine and Sarah are my favorite parents. Hell yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> I guess we're getting to that age, Blaine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pinky the ant. Brad's your favorite parent. Strong, silent type. <laughs> Pain X Piss, Love on the Wasp vibes. All right, so you know the poll, thirteen to seven. I got, I got, I got, I got my butt whooped. So yeah, your butt uh, whooped. I got my butt whooped. Certainly. <laughs> so boom, boom, in the essential. All right, all right. So where are we going? The chat, the chat, and you sort of collectively, um, collectively steered us to in solitude. Uh, uh, where we, where are we going next? Where are we going next? Do we continue on the Swedish train or do we talk about the proto train or do we talk about Canada? Because there's, I see no Canada up there yet. And that's we upsetting. Should, I also probably, see no Germany up there. So we should probably talk about Canada because peculiarly like very important, <laughs> like so, so important and very, and very good stuff coming out of here. Um, uh, uh, I mean, I feel like cauldron is probably the big, a very, a very big force in yeah the, uh, and we do and, we talk about cauldron or do we talk about goat horn uh, or both? i feel like i feel like because we're also kind of it's simultaneously quality and impact and i feel like the impact really came from cauldron you know uh, uh hey uh, john grow thanks for the sub uh Talk about the proto Swedish Canadian tape trading revival. Don't mention tapes around Sarah. We'll never, we'll, we'll, we'll never get home. The stream has to be two and a half hours. Don't say the word tapes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like uh, you know, someone as as someone that grew up in Toronto, it, 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 Cauldron was almost like something I took for granted. It wasn't until Cauldron was like you know basically gone that I was like, oh man. I mean, honestly, we, even living in Western Canada where I did. Um, Cauldron was huge in Western Canada too. Yeah, just uh, always, always touring, always around, putting out yeah. like really. I mean, no bad Did records. Skullfest. Did a first Skullfest. Yeah, and I mean, like this might be a little too left field for this conversation, but like an Epsi. Oh, I mean, you know? definitely like, one of like that's definitely like one of the most fun, fun live bands for sure. But also like incredibly fucking solid records. 
like City Weapons, like definitely one of my favorite all time Canadian albums. Oh damn, yeah, that's that's a great record. Next, 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 oh, next week, next week's the lead up to Canada Day. So next Wednesday we're doing a Canadian metal uh, uh, Lockhorns, me and mm. DK. So that's a good, that's a good, uh, an Epsi. Talk about an Epsi. An Epsi's a good one to talk. I man, it, 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 I hadn't thought about an Epsi in a couple of years, but then yeah, you just get all this. The instant you say an Epsi, I'm just like flooded with 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 getting punched. <laughs> just well, having... I'm not, I'm not sure if you know, but like one of their members actually passed away like oh, in the last two weeks. Oh shit. Yeah, it was uh quite a, I think quite a blow like to the Toronto, obviously to the like east coast scene um but yeah like an epsi is definitely like because if we're gonna talk about like new wave traditional heavy metal which is like thrash speed power doom epic like they were a speed punk band i guess yeah. so maybe they're outside of those realms but i don't crusty, know crusty crusty boy <laughs> yeah <laughs> But and then yeah. there's Skullfist. We got to yeah. talk about Skullfist. Skullfist. But let's let's okay. Let's figure out Cauldron because I feel like uh, Deadpan, the guest Canadian metal band, is Razor. Yeah. Well, I mean, pro, for Proto Razor, uh, uh, a pretty easy, a pretty easy uh, inclusion that we can maybe talk a little bit about. We're trying to focus yeah. on the Protos will come up, and we can toss stuff in there as necessary. But we're trying to we're trying to mostly talk about the uh, the core, the 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 essentials. And yeah. So I mean, what uh, what Cauldron album would you uh, would you would you put up there? I don't know i mean i'm looking at their album like right now because like yeah it's a good question i actually liked goat horn more personally God. like go horn no. color me shocked <laughs> well they were more doomy you know? like they were more doomy uh and like cauldron is great and but the the flat vocals never really did it for me personally like I like more boombast or bombastic. Boombastic, uh, Mr. Boombastic Loma. Yes, exactly. Mr. Fantastic. <laughs> little, too, little too shaggy. <laughs> shaggy slept in there. Whoa! I got Absolutely. possessed. Absolutely. That's possessed. the direction we're going in now. Mr. Boombastic, <laughs> Mr. Fantastic. Um, but yeah, I like to go horn, go horn more personally. But like, I mean, uh, like, you could do their debut. You could do Burning Fortune. I mean, they have they have multiple albums. Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I feel it, like I put I put in ruin here because I mean it was it's basically the it's it's the it's the it's the peak of cauldron. Uh, uh, <laughs> Derek Beer guys with hundred bits. Uh, Mrs. Doomtastic. <laughs> there you go. Mr. Spotted Doomtastic, you. lova lova. Yeah, proto for sure for Shaggy from True Cult Records. <laughs> Fish cult prefers goat horn too. Well, look, there's going to be things we prefer. You, of course. But there's also, you know, the impact of goat horn. Um, you know, goat horn is the, uh, is the, is the, you, you listen to cauldron. Oh, you like cauldron? Where let me, what do I got for you? Yes. Uh, behind the I have curtain. a, I have a. I have an inappropriate amount of things to show you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah just a bunch of watches and goat horn records and stuff on the trench coat. <laughs> goat horn cassettes. Yeah. <laughs> or, so, yeah, I, I mean, yeah. just, you know, a band that really kind of made a name for themselves based on just how amazingly they would play live and how often they'd play live. Oh, and they toured so much. They yeah. toured so much, just like absolutely destroyed themselves. <laughs> I feel like. Uh, yeah. But yeah, if if someone was like, hey, what Cauldron record should I should I listen to? I mean, there's obviously Goat Horn. There's obviously talking about the early records. But, you know, yeah. In Ruin definitely feels like the uh, 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 as 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 uh as as far as like kind of you know strong really strong record all the way throughout you know got yeah got got some decent attention for it people were really stoked on it and uh i feel like you know the impact of cauldron especially in canada is definitely there and uh and yeah for me cauldron i mean would be essential i know obviously there's the yeah. canadian bias but uh but if you in the chat haven't haven't been listening to cauldron records uh you that's your homework that's your homework for today is is cauldron 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 um all right, all right, we're doing good. We're doing good. Uh, we're we're not getting too sidetracked with. <laughs> we're getting a little <laughs> sidetracked, but but that's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. Um, chat, chat. Okay, so we've had some Sarah. We've had some Blaine. We've a little bit. Chat. What do you? Someone someone toss out a name that, that we should be talking about. Whether it's uh, 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 what are you thinking? What are you thinking? Chain of the Night was one of the albums that got you in uh, this wave, Chris Bazaar. True Cult Records, that cover art not digging it though. Yeah, well, it's not the worst cover art. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's no, it's no Eternal Champion, but uh, <laughs> never gonna, never gonna, never gonna let that go. Um, 
Skull Fist, yeah, we can we can disperse the Canadian love a bit. Uh, uh, you see Enforcer down there. You do see Enforcer down there. Um, there's yeah, Enforcer being like a pretty logical one. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, you, Sarah, Sarah really wants to make sure this uh, this little unknown country in metal called Sweden gets absolutely properly represented. <laughs> so uh, so we can head over to Sweden for her, but... <laughs> just throw in some Enforcer and throw in some Ghost maybe um, and, then, <laughs> and then throw on the portrait and then um, we'll be good yeah so so yeah i mean enforcer is again one of those bands that's really early right um uh, kind of kind of coming in coming in start hot at the start of this um and again you know it's nice we're getting you were just saying you find the vocals in cauldron a little flat so hey you, you want something with vocals that aren't flat let's talk about enforcer real quick where we just have like a like a crow featured on the album at time ah! <laughs> it's just a crow in the background flying around there's there's all kinds of craziness uh, uh definitely not a vocally flat band <laughs> uh incidentally a band that i also never got into never no liked it. nope never liked it it was never it was it. always a little too glammy and a little okay. too thrashy for me all right yeah like everyone that i hung out with like in the you know early 2000s and like up to like 2010 or whatever they loved into the night yeah. and like i saw enforcer live and was like yeah this is really solid but vocally like this is the thing about new wave traditional heavy metal that i think is like a, a strong divider for people like a lot of people i mean i hear this about bands all the time that are the bands that i'm the most obsessed with it's like what happened like why do you sing like that <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. I really like Getty Lee. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, <laughs> we all sound like we're pinching our noses and like constipated or something. Yeah. <laughs> Sun gazer. So what I'm hearing is I need to listen to Enforcer. Yeah, I, for me, for me, I, I like I like a lot of speed metal. And I like a lot of the black and speed metal. Like you know, Death Hammer is like a band that I absolutely love. Right. So I just love I love a band that like where it sounds the vocals. You're like these these could be bad, but they're not. I love. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's exactly exactly how I describe it. That's like the stuff that my my husband is obsessed with. Like bad vocalists, he loves them. Um, which might say a lot about Smolder, but <laughs> 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 whoopsie, I'm kind of a bad singer. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, it's uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, Thanks. I mean, yeah, there's a there's a you can see peeking through the horns there uh, an album that I know that I know that he's he, him and I are both obsessed with that have some interesting vocals that I can't remember whether they broke through to you or not, but we'll t hopefully talk about it in a little bit that I'm gonna bring up is uh, you know uh, there's a there's a there's a flight record on there. <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of jank ass vocals, jank ass vocals. I mean that is that is like an important integral part of the new age of just having metal. Yeah. Either jank ass vocals or completely not jank ass vocals where you're like wow like somehow the singer is the best part of the band yeah which is part of the reason why new wave traditional heavy metal can be very hit or miss because a lot of the bands are like oh we have an amazing singer so who cares about songwriting and then yeah. you're like well that doesn't do shit you need a good singer and great songwriting or you need a singer who's like really good at like confident you know confident <laughs> yeah. and like Conf confident gives it, gives it their all plus the songwriting <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. All right. So we'll put the poll in the chat. Enforcer, End of the Night, Diamonds, or Cool? If you uh, if you're thinking uh, Enforcer shouldn't be on here, um, if you wanna if you wanna give them you wanna turn up your nose or or, or you, you ain't <laughs> never heard of them, we can. You wanna uh, be a snobby asshole like me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you wanna pull a Sarah about it, nah, not quite. I mean, this 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 band that eight people have heard of that is admittedly very good, but no one's ever heard of them. <laughs> Uh, let me tell you, those those bands that only eight people like, they're the bread and butter. They have the salt of the earth. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, apparently, it's looking like who? It's looking like uh, it's looking like Enforcer. Uh, not as uh, not as well recognized as I would have thought. Um, yeah. Uh, if you if but if hey, if you like if you like some wild speed metally good bad bad good vocals uh, I definitely recommend checking out Enforcer. Just make sure it's only the first two albums because the band goes in a direction the band made a decision and yeah. i can't deny that it's a decision uh, um it certainly yeah. was made. Yeah. it certainly was made would fortress don't spare the wicked be a consideration i i uh i i gotta do i 
Do I? No. Do, do. Oh, <laughs> did I forget to put a Fortress record in here? I mean, Fortress certainly is a band we can talk about. Um, Morgul Blade from last year. Yep. Yeah. Oh. I, that was. A, I got that. I got the T-shirt. I got the T-shirt. Could have been rocking that one. Uh, damn. Who's Who's really running away with it? Not Not a lot of love for Enforcer. Even if I combined the votes to Into the Night and Diamonds, it's still not overtaken. Who? <laughs> Question mark for Enforcer. <laughs> so. All right. All right. All right. So. Okay. Okay. So. That 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 uh, that that hit for Sweden wasn't uh, wasn't quite at the top of the list for people. So you want to you want to stay in Sweden for a minute? Portrait, yeah, portrait. portrait. We can definitely talk about portrait. portraits. Get it? Like portraits made like multiple very good albums. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But like yeah, that debut, a fucking crossroads, burn the world, I burn the world. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> yeah, and I mean you we know have all the records. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, portrait. Uh, portrait is uh, fantastic. Um, uh, you got uh, uh, again. Uh, you know, uh, a, a different feel. A uh, lot long, like a more, more, more. Not even not in wasting time. Just like less concerned with time. You know, things are things are less vacuum packed. Things are spaced out. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, they a lot less yeah a lot less speed a lot less hooks a lot less chorus just like coming through with really good quality songwriting and like telling a tale and and it being you know and nine minutes and so you know. many riffs yeah so many riffs like portraits like endless riff machine and like i like that you know like yeah. Yeah. and to have yeah they the, the the vocalist i think the thing that he's the best at is like singing to riffs and like obviously that's a, a thing that you can do as a technique as a vocalist but like yeah. i really like the way that he does it cuz yeah it's just got it's got that very like yeah he's got a nice range he's got a a little bit of a nasally register at times but most of the time it's like you know yeah, it gets yeah. up there it's good you know and again it's a you know a bit more of a somber record not definitely you don't pick you don't picture yeah. uh, uh crushing a beer and, and going wild to a portrait uh album as much as some of the other bands on the list um so yeah i, I mean i definitely would crush a beer if uh, like because i haven't seen portrait live yet and i'd I really like to yeah um but yeah like i i think that's to me like the important bands in this genre aren't the bands that you're crushing a beer to you know, because like, yes, it's a standard of heavy metal to be like, this is our song about being heavy metal and about crushing beers. But like when a band takes that to like their entire theme, I just find them to be like yeah. very, very like disposable, you know, yeah, yeah, and, like, yeah. the bands in this genre that tend to be good are the ones that are like really like a little mournful, you know, like they got the mournful cries. <laughs> yeah. Oh, deadpan. I didn't know that portrait are opening for Satan on a tour later this year. That'll be cool. cool. Yeah, that is a cool tour. And, and yeah, we've had a couple of mentions of three inches of blood in the chat, which is something. We yeah. Oh, we should totally talk about three it inches. Didn't of jump, blood. Like I wasn't even thinking about them for this, but it is a fair. <laughs> Andrew on new tier list format, varying levels of beer crushability. Um, <laughs> Is Haunt in Essential the rest? We're gonna talk. There's no way we can't talk about Haunt. He has released enough albums that there's no way we can't talk about Haunt at some point. Dude is a is a he works incredibly hard. He is a just like a riff machine. Yeah, yeah. But like not, not just Haunt too. He's also got a side project. So it's yeah. like, oh, that guy writes yeah. music like professionally. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. So okay, so what what uh, what what portrait album are we thinking? I mean, I loaded I loaded Burn the World because you know I, I featured the last album in in Metal Monthly, but the last album feels a little too new, uh, you know, to be quite as essential. Um, I mean, Burn the World's a good option. Like, I think in Crimea or Crim sorry Crimin. <laughs> Damn, you got a case of the blames. <laughs> See, this is why I'm bad on camera is because when I get nervous, I talk too fast. I just garble all my words together like a total dingbat. But hey, yeah, Crimen, no. Crimen, Lyce, Majesticis, Divine. <laughs> and yes, I did read that off the screen because I could yeah. not have done that otherwise. <laughs> yeah, and that's why I loaded Burn the World. <laughs> <laughs> like, it rolls off the tongue, you know, much easier. Yeah. Okay, But okay. yeah, I mean, Crossroads, I think not as much yeah, yeah maybe burn the world i mean it is from 2017 which is like a little bit later but like yeah. i think portrait deserves honestly you could put any of their yeah, totally yeah absolutely well we'll we'll leave this one out. we'll once again leave this up to the chat and by the way talking fast is good for twitch <laughs> <laughs> people are just live or i'm just live streaming my own mistakes yeah Perfect. yeah that's uh <laughs> 
to Twitch, they, I mean, these people, these half these people hang out with me every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It is, it is, it is just, they, they see like 10 hours of my mistakes a week. Wow. It's just, it, they love mistakes. <laughs> sound, off, sound off in the chat if you love mistakes. And we got a new poll up for portrait. So let us know, crimin, blah, 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 or burn the world. Those are your choices. Yeah, True Cult Records. Yeah, we do. Love it. Love it. Wreck it riffs bringing up ghost. Yeah, we talked about ghost earlier. I mean, it, we might have to we might have to debate or or leave a poll to the chat with her. I mean, it, again, it wasn't one of those bands I thought about, but it, it you know once it's said out loud, you're like, you know, not a bad point. Not yeah, valid. it feels valid just because like one of the yeah one of the defining characteristics is like the melodic like of new wave traditional heavy metal is the melody of it, and you cannot deny the melody of that record, like. It's got that like galloping. I mean, it's not super heavy, but it's got that like galloping. Oh, I haven't listened to that record in a couple of years. Yeah. I'm gonna have to do that. Would have done. <laughs> and it's. I mean, it is like uh, one of the one of the features. It's not every band has it, but when I really love a band, the uh, the the chest filling. You know the 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 chest filling feel where it like. Oh yeah. It, yeah. You know it kind of you you're you're like. It, it, if you're sitting, if you're like kind of, you, you like can't, you're like, ah, I want to take on, I want to take something on. Let's go. Where's a bear? Let's get at that bear. Let's get, well, grab a bear like, and get him in here. The very beginning of that album. Lucifer. You know, yeah, like, I mean, it's a great line. Like powerful start. Here. Powerful start. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Arn City, you're right. Bl Mistakes. Blaine's the most professional streamer on Twitch. Thank you for acknowledging that. I'm a I'm a consummate <laughs> professional. Absolutely. We had uh, we had we had a shred battle last week between uh, uh, Grant and Andy from Unleash the Archers. And at first, oh, yeah. because oh, the filter the 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 way that the sound was coming in, there was like filters on it, to, like yeah. in, in case someone yells or whatever, so that it doesn't go crazy. And so his guitar just sounded like. Fuck, the guitar was crazy for like, and I'm like fiddling knobs and clicking things, being like, how to make his guitar sound not like this. What do I have to do? It took me like two minutes to figure it out. I got there. I got there though. That's what Twitch is who, for. That's what Twitch is who for. Who won the shredding contest? Uh, it was basically a tie. It was basically just a tie. It was, it was charitable. It was for charity. It was very okay. fun. It was basically a tie because yeah, as we established, boy, they have really different playing styles that would really complement each other in a band. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> Andy came in super technical and, and, and Grant came in uh, uh, with a with you know with a little more groove and it was like, boy, wow, these two elements really go together well. <laughs> so well, we actually I mean... we actually got the chat to balance the poll in one of the rounds. <laughs> it did even. <laughs> But I mean, Unleash the Archers is an interesting one, right? Because that's a band that just like ho wholeheartedly since day one has embraced the power metal title. Yeah. yeah. And I don't think they would ever define themselves as new wave traditional heavy metal. But like, fuck, their first album came out, what, 2009? So like they were part of that movement of like traditional heavy metal in Canada. Yeah. Like and back then, like when I was living in Calgary, they used to tour through Calgary all the time. And I went and saw them like all the time. Like I've got all their early CDs and now I really love the direction they've gone. I'm so proud of them for, oh, they're so big now. It's and great. I mean, it's, it's, it's really crazy to think that a power metal band, I mean, one of Juno, that is, that is a weird, that is a weird one. That is a weird one. I would not, I mean, you, you, the best, the, the, that's crazy. That's crazy where you're like. The, 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 basically the Canadian government acknowledges slap power metal <laughs> and you're like what really <laughs> well I mean yeah I, I personally I, I've, I've been on the Juno committee many times um and like generally the band that wins I'm always like yeah that's too yeah. bad yeah but like with Unleash the Archers I was like good for her you know like yeah. the Lucille Bluth like yeah. yes you know because yeah they've they're working their asses off. They're great live, like just consummate professionals. They put so much time and effort and like work into their band. Yeah. Um, and their sound. Oh my God. Apex. Oh, 
another one of my favorite all-time canadian metal albums yeah. again yeah and that was britney a... is so fucking talented like that was a band mezzo to... soprano like oh my god like, <laughs> that's a range i could only dream of having that was like, a band I'm i had like, to punish on stream by talking yeah doing this to them <laughs> <laughs> grant's just like grant's just like i don't know what He's to like, say please stop talking to me <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, uh uh so yeah i mean well it's 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 funny because there was two there was two bands i was like I, I I'll be happy the 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 band that I was the band that I was uh because uh, uh, I was on the Juno community that year and the band I was like I, I think Unleash the Archers is gonna win I I I'm uh definitely pulling for Unleash the Archers but then also my like they aren't gonna win so I'm gonna at least give them one first place vote that uh that I that I actually uh, loaded in to talk about today is these uh, uh right here. Spell. Spell. Yeah, they I were on the. Spell. They were. Uh, spell. Yeah, that like again talking about you know diverse diverse sounds like one of the you'd figure there'd be more like kind of like very seventies inspired stuff in here but they're kind of one of the especially in Canada one of the one of the one of the few so to speak. Well, it's funny because like I don't know if a lot of people would necessarily characterize them as new age traditional heavy metal because they are so proto. Yeah, you know. Okay. Like, yeah. I so personally just, really like just those. wave of traditional heavy metal. <laughs> they're well, just they're just the wave. Yeah, but they're oh, I think Cam is like such an incredible songwriter, and they have um like when they put out their first album, Full Moon Sessions. I was working and living in Calgary, and I was working for this festival called Noctis, and uh, yeah, like we booked them, and uh, I, th I was like, okay, like there's there's something here, it's coming, but it's not there yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like this album, I think is like the crystallization of like the promise that they always had. Yeah. Yeah. Which for sure. Really this exciting. one I was like, really, I was really impressed with. I'll toss, I'll toss a link in the chat because a bunch of people are saying they hadn't heard it. I was kind of not expect, I wasn't expecting it to make the list. I just wanted to, you know, yeah. Fluff it. <laughs> you just wanted to more. talk about spell because just spell is wonderful. Talk about spell for a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Godzilla's though. That's a good question to ask. What puts a band into new wave of traditional heavy metal rather than power metal or on the other end, doom metal? What would you say? That's a good question. Um, well, I get oh, Doom is a is a whole freaking okay. pile of, of you know you someone know how said, I feel about Doom. Someone said tape. Someone said Doom. We're do, do, guys. <laughs> do, do we have a schedule. Do we have all night. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I mean, with power metal, I think like yeah, it, if you're more European power metal influence, then you're definitely not new yeah. wave traditional heavy metal. And I think that that's the stream that um, Unleash the Archers is going for yeah. um, versus like a band like Visigoth who is integrating power metal structures, but they're using more of the USPM sound, um, which is like more rock and roll oriented. It's not a very clear or helpful delineation, but power metal is pretty interesting in that way that like USPM itself, like it's not very well acknowledged as its own genre, yeah. but I think it should be because European power metal sounds quite different. <laughs> very different. Yeah. There's, we found, oh, we found a band releasing an album next month. Uh, <laughs> we all, at first we were making fun of the kid, but then we wound up really loving it. Fellowship. Very. Fellowship. That's from a great the band U name. UK. And it is a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. It's like theater kid power metal. Like they do, they have a Lion King cover for God's sakes. It is a hundred percent. The all it, the knobs it, turn to. It, I just can't wait to be king. That would be, like, <laughs> no, cool. what, what was the what was the uh, what was the Lion King song? Uh, it, we 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 watched. Oh man, um, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. But <laughs> we it was a lot, and we we're like, Ugh. and then we we're like. Are we, uh oh, uh oh. Can you feel the love tonight? Sorry, it's a power metal cover of Can You Feel the Love Tonight? This is ridiculous. Love it. That sounds <laughs> Thanks, awesome. Thanks, Dead Panic Godzilla. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 It's a lot. It's a lot, but definitely <laughs> worth a check out. Uh, I'm really excited about it. But we got, we've got, man, we've gotten really side. Link in chat. All right. All right. All right. The chat, the chat demands it. The chat demands it. All right. All right. But while I'm pulling up this this link, uh, uh, can you can you can you guide us to our next band? Oh boy! All right, uh, we should probably talk about. Did we vote on portrait? Oh wait, we got a portrait record. Yeah. Um. Oh God, I'm being put on the spot. <laughs> hmm. 
Well, do we want to talk about some of the really promising new wave of traditional heavy metal albums that have come out in the last couple of years? Because I do think that that stuff right now is like pretty groundbreaking. Yeah. And I'm really excited about the diversification of the genre. Yeah, totally. Because so, we mentioned Morgul Blade, and it's funny yeah. that you said that you got the shirt because, dude from Morgul Blade, I ordered it three times, and this is how I figured out that the Finnish postal system is a pain in the fucking ass. Damn. Three times. I, yeah. I return every time. I I one of I don't think he's in chat today, but uh, uh, we have we have a, uh, a a a buddy in Ireland who ordered some metal comedy merch, and uh, it got to him. It, I think it. I think I sent it and he got it four months later because <laughs> it was just like trapped in some kind of bureaucratic hell. And eventually IOSS, he yeah. got it. And yeah. 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 IOSS is pretty serious. It's uh, it's making everything way harder for bands. Brexit yeah. was a horrible mistake. Um, it's been yes. really, really bad for yes. bands because um, touring in the UK is really hard now and shipping across Europe is awful. Yeah. That, you have no that, idea. And Finland's like super organized. So they've got everything on lockdown with IOSS, which means that like if someone sends you a cassette from like India and you haven't paid IOSS on it, you have to pay like a 10 euro fee for something that you've probably just paid $10 for. Yeesh. Yeesh. Yeah. Yeesh. Yeah. Yeah. It's not great. We've got, but, man, we've got a bunch of stuff going on. Iron Griffin. We've got an Iron Griffin mention. We've got oh, a scre- Iron Griffin's amazing. We've got a screamer emote from uh DK's channel. <laughs> yeah. There's certainly some there's certainly some some bands to talk about. So okay, you want to talk about a little new, a little newer, a little newer. Uh, I mean, recorded. I want to talk about a band that I'm sure that almost no one here has heard of, but they're amazing. Okay, um, let's do Death it. Rides a Horse. I have not heard of them. <laughs> yeah, they're uh, a European band. Um, they're really incredible. I don't know. It's like it's like ne- definitely new wave traditional heavy metal, like epic power doom in the same way that like Smolder self identifies um, female fronted really. And the, the woman who sings also as a bassist, just awesome galloping rhythms, really, really good music. It's, I just want to talk about it cause I want everyone to listen to it. If I had access to the chat, I would drop death rides a horse dot bandcamp.com into that chat. I'm on it. Go iron Griffin though is another great one. Yeah. Um, Iron Griffin's great. Finnish, um, traditional heavy metal, very warlord esque um, band that very I very much love. Um, and this is the thing about the new age traditional metal or traditional heavy metal that I do want to talk about because I often see like there's tons of um, bands with women that are just absolutely killing it right now. And every time I see one of these lists and there's no women listed in it, I'm just like. <laughs> You don't know anything about this genre if you're not including women in your list, because honestly, like right now, like if you think if you go back a little bit, like an essential album, Satan's Hollow. Female fronted band Mandy has fucking pipes, just like Jake has pipes. Yeah, that album came out like the self-titled Satan's Hollow album came out. I think it was 2017, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Yeah, 2017. And that record absolutely like. I think yeah. helps break open the gates to like, you know, show more and more people that like women were contributing quite a lot to this like revival of traditional heavy metal um, and killing it, like really offering some like new fresh perspectives. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, it was a, it was a, 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 a yeah, a very big record, um, you know, had a pretty strong impact, generally universally loved. Um, I, I, well, there's also like Tower who put out that great yeah. album, Shock to the System, last year or this year, was it? And then there's Solicitor, like Solicitor, yep. speed, you know, a speed trad metal band, yep. like Cavalier, another Finnish speed metal band. Absolutely fantastic. Like, I, 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 I just want to say we are we are listing a bunch of Metal Monthly alumni as well. I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not uh, I'm not Lane not just harvesting my Facebook feed for his show. <laughs> Hey, how dare you? I see you. <laughs> hey, no, you you don't see me. What we we literally do is we uh we open up every single album coming out every single month uh, mm-hmm. on my channel on Sundays, and we literally <laughs> listen to every single thing that comes out. It's like, but the thing that pisses me off is I find stuff, and then you post it on your Facebook page like a week before Metal Monthly comes out. And I'm like, God damn it! Now it looks like I'm just stealing shit from Sarah. Damn it. <laughs> 
<laughs> I've actually had someone else tell me that before. They're like, how much time do you spend every day listening to new music? I'm like, well, every day, all day? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I work looking for Bandcamp. For... That's the benefit. Yeah, <laughs> looking for new music is literally five hours of my life, minimum every week, forever. Um, uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's a uh, 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 Satan's Hall. And I mean, if we're just talking, you know, uh, if we're just talking about great, great female voices, I mean, an early one that, again, kind of maybe people are going to say is too, like, I don't know, is too, uh, uh, it's, they're going to pull some in solitude shit on me. But uh, 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 Christian Mistress, uh, one of the, one of the, one of the kind of great, uh, uh, where I, I constantly hear that voice in, in, in other bands, you know, I, I yeah. the amount of times I, I hear a band, I'm like, oh, is she finally in a new band? Click. No. Fuck. <laughs> well, if we're going that direction, then do we also, um, think that we could include blood ceremony or Koshmar going into more Canadian trad metal bands names, you know, cause like those bands both, I think have left a pretty interesting blood uh, ceremony, mark. especially blood ceremony, especially. Yeah. That's, that's a band that has had a, a, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of actually mainstream success as well. And Koshmar, uh, you know, and just, just, just listing some metal monthly alumni. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. We're just, we're just talking. It's just, it's just the metal monthly. It's the metal monthly lock horns. It's uh, we do you, I mean, as I've said, I think you and I have the, probably the most uh the most overlap in our in our in our affections at banger so um yes <laughs> there's no prog there's no deathcore <laughs> no mosh no core no trends no fun <laughs> uh, yeah pain x piss uh, uh 100 bits massive shout out to sarah for being a band camp cheat code if y'all don't follow her over there you're doing yourself a disservice yeah sometimes <laughs> we find a band and we scroll down to see if there's a sarah review yet <laughs> we're, like, we're like where's sarah where, where where's she at <laughs> yeah i've got like 750 or something items in my collection now jesus jesus yeah that's uh you gotta, you gotta give bands money that's, yeah that's, i mean my band can i keep i keep my band camp private because there's not a lot in the records because i just get all the records at work and then if i like something i just buy a, a t-shirt or a hat yeah. or a, i love i love merch give me the merch i already got the record give me the merch <laughs> and then and then i you know and then it's i i feel like it's it's uh and then it's it's a dual purpose because then i wear it on the stream and people say nice significant point shirt and then maybe someone buys a significant <laughs> point record and then it's uh, it never stops Never stops moving units, but yeah, I mean that's uh that's uh, getting getting back to the topic at hand. Um, uh, uh, Satan's Hollow, uh, uh, great Satan inclusion. Hollow. Satan's Hollow, great inclusion. Um, and uh, and that's I feel like a pretty easy inclusion to the list uh, in my mind. Um, yeah, I uh, I forgot to load that cover, <clears throat> but there's a, it's because there's a lot. I mean there's a, there's so much, uh, and especially because it's like. So so much so recently it's like really is like a uh, a uh, an embarrassment of riches um just so much stuff um yeah uh, uh, uh going on in the in the in the genre for really like every month every month there's a record that i would that i would put uh that i would put up here with with all the other records and uh and yeah yeah um, i mean my my most favorite recent find has been an ep by a band called bergfried Always coming in with the stuff that I definitely don't have covers for. <laughs> <laughs> also on Bandcamp, but it's called Bergfried. It's basically like epic metal blue oyster cult pop. But yeah, another one, like for me, an essential would be uh, the full length album by Grendel's sister. They're a German band. It's called, uh, oh God, I don't even want to say it because it's German. And if I read it without looking at it, I will so utterly mess it up but it's called myrtle wreath merkenkrantz and it came out on cruise del sur um initially on cd uh this is a really great like epic heavy metal band um almost sounds it's an ep like, well it is but the thing is is that the a side is all in english and the b side's all in that's German. very cool it's very cool. definitely that, a cool yeah but like if you think of the new wave of traditional heavy metal like if we were really gonna go super far like we could talk about like the scenes in like mexico and japan and yeah. finland and all that other stuff but like you know like perfect example of a brand new uh very promising uh new wave of traditional heavy metal band would be that lucifer yes album yes an iron shackles yes. record 
and that's like a lot of that's in German, and that is yeah, it's that's fucking a great. great. Oh man, the, like, that's so uh, that's a uh, uh, oh man, that that that's a that record is uh, is so good. The uh, Iron Shackles is like on my like run playlist because like it comes on I'm like Frizzo from Iron Shackles, fucking running down the street. Oh, yeah, then God. you go. Boom, when you're yeah. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Boom. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> yeah. And Plus, uh, hey, 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 is, Zay Dilla coming in with Dream Quest Ends by Smolder? Question mark. It's a killer record. Never heard of it. Who's Smolder? It's an EP, though, so it doesn't count. Um, uh, 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 Deadpan, your favorite sure. new wave of traditional heavy metal band is Angel Sword. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a finished one as well. And the finished Dude, scene, I think, should be represented. Finished scene. Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, weird uh, little scene. Weird little scene. Finland's not as much... Uh, Finland's not getting as much representation in the new wave of uh, uh, traditional heavy metal. Uh, it's definitely uh, a heavier country predominantly. And uh, it's. Uh, I feel like it's but harder it... to be a white supremacist in <laughs> heavy metal. So Finland's not interested. <laughs> uh, yes, the black metal scene is a fucking nightmare. Just um, kidding, I hate just it. Kidding. <laughs> no, you're not. You're you're completely well, dead on accurate. <laughs> but uh, but the trad metal scene in Finland is actually pretty cool. Like we've started going to uh, a lot of gigs. Um, there's like the speed metal scene, obviously, with bands like Ranger. Yeah. Um, and I think Ranger, they could arguably be in this scene, but I think they're more speed metal than they are like new wave traditional heavy metal. Um, but there's bands like Lord Fist, and there's Iron Griffin, and then there's yeah. um, Angel Sword, and like. Yeah, I think, you know, I think we should include a Finnish band. Yeah. Iron Griffin's a really good one. And so Iron so Griffin is, is great. Good. Yeah. Uh, and Angel Sword are great too. Uh, so we do have a question. What was the ruling on Three Inches of Blood? Uh, oh, yeah. So that's a good question. That's a that's a great poll. Three Inches of Blood, yay or nay? Not if they're good or bad. We all love Three Inches of Blood, but yay or nay for are they included on the list? Are they a new wave of traditional heavy metal band? Should they make the list? Um, what are the thoughts in the chat? Let us know. Yeah, someone talk about Advance and Vanquish because they also kind of like were doing it when it was not yeah. at all trendy. Yeah. Like yeah. they were doing it at a time when like they were one of the only ones around. Yeah. Like the only counterpart that I could really think of, like an American counterpart is probably like early Slaufeg because like Slaufeg definitely helped trigger this movement as well. Um, yeah. And Cam Pipes. Whew. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's interesting. Someone's saying, aren't they power metal? But it's like, they are. Are they, but... are they, are they power metal as well, though? You know, it's a, it's yeah. definitely, a, a, they kind of, they kind of, they're a cool band in that they're pretty singular in their, uh, you know, the, it's almost like they're a power metal band, but then, you know, they have some harsh vocals to kind of drag them out of power metal and back into the kind of more <laughs> normal metal space. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the harsh vocals, like, I've, I've never been a fan of like epic or power bands that do use harsh vocals, which is why I kind of got like a little bit pissy about like certain parts of uh, early Unleash the Archers material. Cause like, I prefer not hearing like the, the growls in like these epic songs, but yeah, it's not my, not my forte. All right. So right. Power, th three inches of blood, uh, nine yays, 12 nays. So it's looking like it's going to be nay unless there's a, unless there's a late, push uh yeah you know it does feel it does feel a little outside just outside of what we're talking about i mean i love them i'm re the the saddest thing for me is that the last time i was supposed to see them there was like some fucking ice storm in, and it was an <laughs> ice storm in vancouver so like they were like we don't know how to deal with this with the, we, no one here is equipped for this and they had to cancel the tour because there was basically Aww. just like uh, the bus couldn't like get through a pass or some stuff <laughs> and then and i was like oh well, well i'll catch you the catch them next time uh, they come through town and then they might have rescheduled the date. And I was at the schedule. Or maybe they never even rescheduled the date. Yeah, definitely a band that feels like gone before their time. Um, but wow, really close. 13 yays, 12 nays. So uh, not quite falling in there. But yeah, uh, yeah, people reminding me of some stuff. Like I think I first heard Three Inches of Blood in Brutal Legend. I think I first heard Three Inches of Blood in Saints Row too. Yeah, a band that weird got on a bunch of Brutal soundtracks. Brutal Legend, holy shit, yeah. I forgot about that game. <laughs> yeah, was uh, was was really got you know a band that really got got out there. Um, which uh, which, huh? Yeah, yeah, man. Oh, bummer. I wish that. I mean, I you know, it's it's obviously something internal. Blah blah blah. But you're always like. Why'd you, why, why don't you just not break up? How about you just not? How about you not? <laughs> Have you considered not? 
I mean, they had a good run though. Yeah. Yeah. Like I just they put out like multiple albums. They they toured quite a lot. Yeah. They uh you know, I think they were important to like yeah. the Canadian metal scene. I think they probably also helped pave the way for some of the uh other trad metal bands that were coming yeah. out, even if those trad metal bands kind of were like doing it in opposition to Three Inches of Blood. Yeah. Yeah. So I just I just I, I'm now I'm at the point where I'm like, it's been long enough, guys. Reunion tour, advance and vanquish tour. What what's the anniversary of this shit? When do we come up when do we come up on a nice reunion tours? On a na- and a nice on a nice base ten. A nice base ten of advance and vanquish, uh, so that we can get we can see that shit again. <laughs> No, like, oh, I, yeah, I'm, I'm like a big proponent of like when bands break up, they should just like le- let it be. And like, I, yeah, maybe do like a reunion tour and just play the album. But like, yeah. oh, like most reunions are not good. And like, ugh. I just, just I, I said about like knowing yourself well enough to like know when you're ready to put something to rest, like I your think, artistic projects to rest. Yeah, I think there is a the one thing I like that's been happening is the like, the the festivals for the like special occasion festival x plays x yeah i, I like that i like that that's happening and it, you know three inches of blood is a band i could throw a couple more bucks at you know <laughs> you know yeah, what i yeah. mean i i can give i could break off a 20 for the for for three inches of blood again in my life you know a couple more times so this so, is why all these old bands should just open band camps so that we can all just throw money at them yeah yeah it's it's just man. Be like cool. thanks for the memories like you yeah. know Here's twenty bucks. <laughs> yeah. Can you can you can you talk? Can you can you like send an emissary to High Roller Records and like shake them or something? Like, what are you doing? Text based merch? What are you doing? <laughs> There's I got I've got some people in my sites. So I'll put it that way. <laughs> as gently but, as possible and without revealing anything because I can't really talk about that kind of stuff. But like yeah. Yeah. Okay. We know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Good to hear. Good to hear. All right. We got to we got to get some more albums on here. We just keep in. We just keep piling around. Um, OK, well, I mean, we haven't uh, it's it's very easy to talk about all the Canadian bands, but there is just such a what we, we do have. We do have such an amazing amount of, of unique, special, strong Canadian bands that are actually really popular. So it's not even like we're, we're cheating. Um, uh, they've been mentioned a couple times in the chat. Uh, I feel like there's like zero percent chance we wouldn't put them on here. But uh, uh, dun, 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 Traveler. Thoughts on Traveler. Do you, Sorry, love, do you hate Traveler? No, just not super into them. You're not super into Traveler. I'm, I didn't know. I didn't know you didn't like Traveler. I didn't say I didn't like them. Just not into them, you know. Yeah, you, you didn't know say you didn't like them, but your face said you didn't like them. I put Traveler up there, and you're like, well, I mean, like, there's a couple bands that I know are like flag bearers. Yeah. And I listen to them. I'm like, they're doing it right, but it's not for me. If that makes sense. I mean, so it's like. I, I, yeah, or we you're not in this you're not into the space ones. It seems to be the space ones aren't working for you. <laughs> Flight uh, I mean, traveler, the space isn't clicking with you. You don't want to be in space. Actually, I mean, space is pretty cool, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like there's a handful. Like I'm looking at the other albums that you've listed, and a lot of them are albums that I was like, those ones didn't really hit home for me personally. Like Holy Grail, never a thing that I really enjoyed you know um me neither but yeah. i thought it would come up <laughs> there's, oh, white there's, wizard? There's, like... there's stuff they white wizard i hate <laughs> but they are big right they they did yeah. have a big impact so sometimes it's not about you know i have you have to i i we put personal tastes aside a little bit yeah. and you get the chat the chats like what do you well, mean then, no you're wrong about white wizard and then you go okay, we definitely okay. like in terms of like importance uh we definitely need to put haunt up there yeah i feel and like we definitely need to put up night demon yeah, I feel like haunt haunts a pretty easy inclusion. Uh, th- I mean, you know, there's, <laughs> there's, there's certainly, uh, 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 there's certainly a lot of haunt records to choose from. Um, yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, that guy works super hard. That and guy works super possibly. hard. I feel um, like I, the joke the I make is night demon. Yeah, the the joke I make is that dude uh, uh, accidentally uh, or intentionally. Um, uh listened to the ceo from spotify when the ceo of spotify is like if bands want to make a living they can't be expected to put in an album every three years and he's like all right time to make a living <laughs> let's get to work <laughs> so incidentally he actually does like manage and like like does everything oh, yeah. on his own like I've, I've, I've talked to him about this before um because i've taught a lot of workshops 
yeah. to like independent musicians on like how to you know like strategies they can use to actually like make a living and like he's married with a, a very young child and yeah. he's doing his band full time like he's he's got the rights for like the vast majority of his stuff he's pressing his own vinyl yeah. like he he's doing it right you know like he you know his output is very large yeah. um and yeah it's because because he's doing it full time like he actually has that luxury which i think is like kind of an interesting commentary you know because if you look at like the music industry in the 70s and 80s like it was possible to make like a reasonable yeah. living off of like making an album every year or two and then touring for the rest of the year and that's essentially what he's doing yeah well i mean like, you... Even, you know look at a band like your eye heap like fuck those dudes put out i think between 1970 and like 1976 they put out like seven albums or eight albums like that's insane to think yeah. about it does feel it feels a little bit like well because so it, it, it Oh wait, I can't. Anyways, uh, there's there's a thing I'll tell you later. Um, but uh, it does really feel like at one point in his life he was like, I think I'm gonna play music. And then Sammy Hagar was over at the house and was like, Listen, kid, if you want to play music and be make a shit ton of money, let, you worry about the music. Let me tell you how to make a shit ton of money. <laughs> and Sammy Hagar just like gave him a business class one day because I mean, I I I, I put Mind Freeze up because I really like that Mind Freeze record. That was yeah. a, again just Metal Monthly, Metal Monthly, Metal Monthly because we're talking about current stuff. But um, I'll put it into the chat whether it's burst into flames if it hurts could fly or mind freeze i don't think the other right started to get the output started to i think get a little the output's a little high um i think there's uh there's some there's some uh there's a sameness to it for yeah sure. there's certainly some editing that can come in but i mean you know uh, <laughs> uh i don't have to i don't have to be uh, if i'm reviewing it i have to say it but if i if i'm just listening and i have to be precious i can make a haunt playlist I can make a haunt playlist of my favorites, <laughs> and you can fill a play. You can fill a, a playlist or two, no problem. Definitely, dude can dude can write songs really, really yeah. well. Uh, well, because you know. he also has a Doom side project, or side, side projects. Uh, side project, side project. His 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 side 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 project, Beastmaker. Beastmaker and Beastmaker yeah. was also like very <laughs> prolific. <laughs> yeah, prolific. That's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. yeah. Cause didn't he drop eight EPs at once? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The old, uh, the, just the, just the. We'll do the Lockhorns on Beastmaker EPs. Uh, <laughs> and I yeah, like if, if we're going on that now, we got to do Night Demon too. Yeah. So you got eight EPs. I love that. There's also then the compilations, which are the EPs put together. <laughs> <laughs> you're like clever clever girl <laughs> i mean it's easier to check out once than it is to add eight items to your cart and yes. then check out yeah exactly you know it's uh 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 and hey i i don't i don't i don't besmirch the man i uh i and hey it's 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 perpetual material for me so i love it uh i'm always gonna i'm always gonna josh on haunt but uh in a way where I, it's because i i mean you know i'm gonna listen to all the haunt records because there's always uh, there's <laughs> There's at least going to be a song on there that I can add to a I can add to a running playlist or something, you know. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely got like he's got a very timeless, like timeless yeah. sound. Yeah, and I, I I really like that, like the production really, and he's such a good guitarist. And I yeah. mean, obviously, he's got like family history, um, yeah. kind of like you know, like backing him up on that. But like, it's yeah. cool. But you know, it's it's nice to see that it's nice. I mean, the it's nice to see where it's like he has the family history but it's like look if all kids of musicians and celebrities and stuff were doing that i wouldn't be mad at any of them <laughs> dude's working dude's working you yeah, know? yeah he's it's not like he's like oh well i have this connection it's like i have this connection so now i'm gonna write three albums a year that's not that's not normal that's not normal child of rock star behavior no that's like hard working musician yeah. behavior yeah, yeah. I, yeah, yeah I, re I really admire, I really admire Trevor. I think he, yeah. Yeah. So, he uh, his success. Burst into flames, way. burst into flames, the clear winner on that. Uh, uh, if Icarus can fly and mind freeze, not even, not even ranking, just one vote for either of them. So just absolutely steal <laughs> on the poll. Yeah. Born too late. Got in late. <laughs> That's because you were born too late, buddy. Uh, did they define a starting year for the new wave? Uh, not not a hard year. We've been loose. When something doesn't feel right, it don't feel right. Um, wow. I mean, Brew, thanks for the follow. I think we were kind of talking about, like, because if we're going to talk about Proto, yeah. 
like we still haven't talked about proto yeah proto is just there in case in case proto is not the proto is not the focus we, right and okay. and zilla dilla thanks for the thanks for the uh the follow yeah proto is not the focus proto's there generally because sometimes you know sometimes there's an album that's on the cusp proto used to be kind of in the original law corns you know you really wanted to define proto but at this point i feel like we've got uh, 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 Proto's now kind of Proto and the rest are kind of the thing to put a record that maybe we have to talk about, but like doesn't doesn't make sense in the list for 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 it's too new, you know, it didn't have enough of an impact, or like it's you know, it's it's uh, it's rainbow and uh, it's not new wave of traditional heavy metal, but we probably wouldn't have this without that kind of thing. Proto is Wolf, yeah, Wolf again, you know, stuff like that, yeah, Wolf. Brew, hello from Belgium, hi from hi from Canada, hi from Toronto. <laughs> wolf for sure yeah again you know we can talk about wolf as a proto but we i mean we 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 still also have to have to talk about getting getting this list rounded out because we're getting to two hours we're getting close to the end of the stream so we got a final we got a final <laughs> half hour where we got to decide on some records we got to cut some records maybe we gotta you gotta prune pick and choose um uh, well how many how many albums do we want in each category so legend legends locked it's closed um and then essential is the only thing we're trying to put records in and we want 10 essential ideally we got a 10 okay. you know nice nice base 10 nice round number and uh and and uh i'm gonna talk i i haven't tossed a i haven't tossed um too many records out uh, uh sweden bring it back to sweden um i don't know uh 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 that's not that's that's knocking futs. Uh, 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 you're in you're in Newmarket. Hey, re greetings greetings from Toronto. We're close by. Thanks for coming out. Um, Steel Wing. Do you like Steel Wing? I really like Steel Wing. I've actually never listened to Steel Wing. You've never listened to Steel Wing? Oh man. Uh, uh, I, was thinking, I was thinking of another band. I was like, what about Cypress? Like the city. Or the country, I mean. <laughs> yeah. I, so, am I? You, you haven't listened to Steel Wing? Am I? Am I alone in the chat on Steel Wing? Because every once in a while, I, I I toss out a band where I'm like, got it, and, and then it's like, airball. <laughs> I'm like, what? I don't know Steel Wing. Uh, 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 Steel Wing, yeah. They're they're a Swedish band. Um, uh, the, the album uh, "Zone of Annihilation" uh, is 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 really great. Um, they're cool heavy metal band. Uh, I get. You don't like space. She don't like space. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> the, the 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 gal don't like space. All right, all right. I, all right. Space. I don't need my head exploding for no reason. <laughs> for pressure. Yeah, definitely more. So it's a uh, it's 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 sci-fi. I mean, Steel Wing. It's uh it's it's the Steel Wing is not like a fantasy bird. It's it's more of a sci-fi vibe. And yeah. yeah, just I mean, it's there. Every once in a while, there's like a there's like a more mid tempo song on a record, and I'll just skip it. But uh, when they play fast, they play so fast, it's so fun. Uh, uh, the singer Riley uh, got just an absolutely amazing voice. Um, yeah, I uh, I I love Steel Wing. I love Steel Wing, and uh, I guess I guess pff, Airball. <laughs> I guess Airball was Steel Wing. What the hell? No one knows Steel Wing. Okay, okay. And no one in the chat knows Steel Wing? No one? Just me? Just me? Well, I guess... Uh, what I'll about toss Mirror? Pyramid Mirror? of Terror. We can talk about Mirror. Absolutely. That was a fucking great album. Cypress Bass Band. Um, they started out and they were kind of like a little bit more disorganized, I felt like, with their, um, with their debut. Um, but yeah, like they are a classic heavy metal band. First album came out in 2015. Pyramid of Terror came out in 2019. Pyramid of Terror was like an absolute banger. It kind of, uh, it, it didn't get a ton of attention, but I think that's because, uh, you know, it was on Bad Omen, which is the same uh, label that released uh, the Spell record. Um, and yeah, they're now on Cruise del Sur, but the album that they put out in 2019, I think is like absolute, like Scorpions, Worship, heavy metal rollicking, like masterpiece kind of record. All right, mirror, yeah, deadpan, de deadpan approved. Um, uh, so that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, the hooded, it's hooded menace all over again for me. The first, but the first thing I did for, uh, the first thing I did for banger was the death doom lock horns, yeah. and uh, and I was like, you know, 
president at that time and still uh, uh, self-proclaimed president of the Hooded Menace Fan Club. And so I come <laughs> on and I'm like, I'm like all geared up and uh, and I'm like, and they're like, so what's your pick for legend? And I'm like, well, we have the, we have, we're talking about early legends. My pick is more of a modern legend, Hooded Menace. And then there was like fucking crickets in the chat. Just who is Hooded Menace? And I'm like, what? <laughs> no, what? No, what? <laughs> yeah. 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 Pro Hooded Menace is Proto. Hooded Menace is Proto. New Wave of Traditional Heavy Metal. Yeah. I mean, the last totally. the last Hooded Menace record uh, had the mo had had a fair amount of heavy uh, heavy metal in there. Um, uh, uh, cool. Cool to see. Cool to see. Cool to see. Um, uh, uh, hey, hey, Larsic, thanks for the follow. Uh, so, OK, the Lunar Shadow been mentioned a couple times in the chat. Not something I have loaded, but. Sarah, Lunar Shadow Thoughts? They're an interesting band. I don't know if I would... Oh, they're almost, like, proggy in, like, yeah. an unusual way. Um, but, yeah, they do kind of get... They are kind of, like, spell to me in that they maybe don't fit, but yeah. maybe they can. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's... And that's part of, like, the disambiguation of, yeah, I guess, um, of you the know... genre. That, that, yeah, The Smokeless Fire was a record I really loved. I, I didn't like yeah. the last also record as well much. Um, but yeah, definitely kind of in that uh, in that gothy vibe, in that uh, in that uh, uh, idle hands, <laughs> in the gothy, idle hands gothy. group. Uh, yeah, yeah, that that kind of that kind of movement going on right now, which is yeah, it does feel like it feels a little bit like there's. I mean, I guess the reason I wouldn't I didn't think about them is is the same reason I wouldn't talk about idle hands or unto others uh, today yeah. is just that it, it feels like that, like y you can kind of put a, 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 a boundary and a border around it and looter shadow them and a couple other bands. And it feels like that bubble exists and new wave of traditional heavy metal. It, f it does feel kind of distinct in that you do, you do start seeing a movement around that. That does seem to be kind of moving away yeah but it's it's but it's cool you know what i mean like yeah. it's it's hard oh, to yeah. like i mean i like it find um like yeah it, of course we're being a little bit like pushy about like what's making it and what's not i mean ugh, like we also don't have do we talk about skull fist we, we did not talk about skull fist there's a skull fist there's definitely a there's definitely a skull fist record loaded damn we're really we're really leaning on the can on the on the canada yeah <laughs> but like skull fist would have been a cool option yeah, Skullfist like, is certainly, you know, um, uh, uh, again one of those one of those uh, uh, strong rep for Canada type of bands. Um, uh, you know, great shows, great great to have in the country, great to see a bunch, and and yeah, I mean they're they're a bit more of they were fucking thrilling. Yeah, yeah. Like those um, dudes, I once I once like saw them in Calgary, and for like an entire song. One of the guitarists was sitting on top of the other guitarist's uh, like shoulders, and oh my god, watching them play live, like they had all the you know like the, um, gosh, what's the guy's name? The guy from Aerosmith, how he used to always sing with like um, the, like the scarves. oh god, what am I trying to say? Scarves. Yeah, scarves. Yeah, yeah, and he'd yeah. always attach them like to his mic stand. Yeah. And oh yeah, I just remember that Skullfish show. Like it was probably at least ten years ago, but holy shit, was it fun? Yeah. And like that debut like head of the pack i think we should put that on there as like a no really like, not chasing the dream not chasing the dream you're just making my life difficult with me loading all exclusively the wrong albums here for you <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i mean zach's voice is really unique special yeah you know the 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 band is is really good but his voice is i think really for me what kind of like yeah puts it into a uh a different kind of category and makes it a band that I was always so excited about. Um, uh, the the last the last one I don't know if I, I the one that just came out I didn't I didn't give it a fair shake I don't know it didn't wow me off the top the kind of way Skullfist had in the past but I mean there's some there's some really great Skullfist records and we do have in the chat though we are getting a a bunch of screamer 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 oh yeah screamers for screamer um screamer, screaming for screamer screaming for screamer uh which you know <laughs> makes sense <laughs> uh, i, I, <laughs> I mean I, I i i love scream <laughs> i love screamer uh uh 
uh, you know, our 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 boy, yeah. our boy Swedish. just yeah. Our boy just hanging out, uh, our boy hanging out there uh, with them, filling in, filling in, Mr. Daniel DK. The, oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, tour, d- doing touring, doing, uh, doing, doing lifting duties. Um, I mean, that Highway Heroes album, I really loved. I really loved. Again, I, God, I, I, I feel like a f- I, it's embarrassing for how many times I've said Metal Monthly. But uh, uh, again, just <laughs> like we're talking about a modern genre that I like. So, yeah, another another easy Metal Monthly pick. Um, uh Again, running, if, and it's heavy metal. So we're just talking about my workout, my exercise playlist, and Highway to Hear Highway to Heroes is 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 on there. I really love that album. Um, yeah. I'd 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 put that up there for sure. I'd put that up there for sure. Scre- the the screamers the screamers screaming for screamer in the chat. Are we talking about Highway to Heroes, or, or or are you gonna tell me you gonna tell me I loaded the wrong album cover too? <laughs> I uh, I I got I got. Uh, Hell Machine? How are we thinking? Highway of Heroes? Highway of Heroes is... is, is Phoenix? Yeah, that's, my, that's my that's my pick. That's my pick. Anyone in the chat still... Fish called Night Demon still missing. Night Demon still missing. Oh, Night I thought Demon. we talked about Night. Oh, we right, had, right. yeah, we kind of Night Demons there. We we didn't we didn't really uh, we didn't really dig into Night Demon. So yeah, we can have some. We have a little Night Demon sesh. I mean, uh, like, I think everybody needs to acknowledge up front that like obviously Jarvis has had like an enormous impact on like the trad model scene in the last decade, just like by virtue of the fact that he was one of the three people who helped get Sierra Thungle back together. Yeah. And like he put on Frost and Fire and like he Frost and Fireland in Ireland, which is where he now lives. Uh that just happened. Um, but yeah, and I mean, aside from that, obviously, like Night Demon has also like really, really gotten quite large. Um, and live just very, very, very fucking solid. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, then, I mean, yeah. They're definitely, you know, I planned, I pl- I, I assumed that they were going to come up. I tossed uh, uh, Darkness Remains in there. For me, yeah. they're, uh, the thing about, the, again, we're, we're to, to be nitpicking, I guess the reason I, I don't, I'm not as big on Night Demon is they feel a little more, they've got a little more rock music in them where they kind of, yeah, it's almost like true. a little bit more of like a normal band to me, like a kind of like a rock, uh, uh, like a rock, a rock yeah it's more hard rock i feel than heavy metal in a lot of it um uh, yeah. uh and there's it's like weird because there's like points in the record where i'm like oh never mind never mind i'm on night demon side and then like pretty much it's whenever they're playing slow i'm like boo <laughs> go fast and then they'll go fast and i'll be like yes uh but the pro- the problem with them is you know with heavy metal i'm i'm kind of okay picking and choosing songs a little bit more than i am with a lot of other genres but yeah. night demon does it in songs <laughs> it's like the song is slow and then the chorus is fast and i'm like can i i, I gotta i gotta i gotta pull out i gotta i gotta i gotta pull out uh some editing software and just start clipping choruses out to string together it's ah, yeah i don't know um i mean i mean I, I get that i'm not i'm not like a huge fan myself but i also like very much admire like the work ethic and like yeah. the the passion and like the you know like the the lineage do you know what i mean so yeah. And like they've got like legions of very fanatical yeah. fans. Yeah. So um, I mean, I guess it could be oh, one yeah. of those things where it's not about taste; it is about impact. But I'll toss it. Yeah. I'll toss it to the chat. Night Demon, yay or nay? What are we thinking? Do they need to be on there? Is it essential? Is it not? Um, uh, yeah. Shout out new Summerland track. We're not talking about new tracks. <laughs> we get distracted so easily, and you're not making that. Uh, you're not helping, chat. You're, we're gonna, we're gonna go on. We're gonna get down a road of new singles we heard recently that we're hyped on. I mean, that Summerlands record could definitely yeah. get on there. Yes, I want to see the Summerlands record on there. I want to see the Iron Griffin, Curse of the Damned yeah. album on there. And like, are we gonna? T- are we? Am I, am I, do I have to be the narcissist who's like, oh, what are we going to talk about my band? Blah. Well, so I normally save, <laughs> I normally save talking about uh, 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 your band for the end, towards oh, the end, because sometimes... Actually, I'll, I'll just pat myself on the back until yeah. then. Because sometimes it creates an awkward <laughs> lull in the conversation. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, I so so there's... Uh, there's the, what I think... It's weird... To, the weird thing about Smolder to me is that 
you so we're like hey this is my band smolder and then you recorded a record and then it was just like bam you know what I, you know what i mean like the it, it felt like it was like just immediately uh uh picked up by everybody the reception um uh was 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 amazing and deserved and it was just really cool to see you know uh there's like there's like the weird difference between you know if your friends are like established musicians and they started a band you're like okay but when your friends are starting at like a new like a fresh a fresh band there's there's first of all there's the absolute terror that you're gonna have to see the band you're gonna have to <laughs> listen gonna to the awful. band you're gonna have to have a conversation about the band um and uh and and there then and there was none of that and it, it it wasn't even like oh well maybe i'm just looking at it kindly because i'm a friend because it did seem like it you you went from you went from hello i'm gonna i'm gonna start singing in a band to hello i am at all the festivals i'm touring everywhere i'm with heroes i'm everybody's acknowledged my album and you know it's uh it's again it's kind of that thing you're talking about where where you're you're not like a classically trained vocalist or in any way but it 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 doesn't matter just because your 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 ability to communicate passion is uh i think probably definitely one of the biggest things that ha has caused the bands to kind of uh uh be in as many people's uh, uh uh top lists as many people's uh collections as it has because i mean you're you're there's very few people on this earth, on the planet earth, that love <laughs> metal, love the metal you make, the, the style you're, you're performing in as much as you. And, you know, it, it's, it's cool. It's really cool to see you be able to translate that into the music as well and for everybody to go, yes, and you are correct. Good job. <laughs> I mean, honestly, we, we obviously don't, didn't expect that. Like, there's no way to orchestrate it. Yeah, yeah um, right. Like, we obviously did all of the things. Like, I've worked in the music industry since I yeah. was, like, 16. I'm in my 30s now. So, like, I've learned a lot of lessons from, like, covering local bands my entire life. And, like, I wanted to avoid all of that. But most of all, like, I'm just... My bandmates are really talented, you know? And, like, I think that that kind of really helped was that when we started the band, obviously, it was myself and my now husband. But we did the band for, like, five years and nobody gave a shit and we couldn't find members and like people were like making fun of us because they were like, Oh, you're in a band with your girlfriend. That's lame. <laughs> right. And then, and then it just, it, it, so it was really satisfying for everything to come together the way that it was because both Sean and I have a very like specific and very similar aesthetic taste. Like I'm a professional editor. Like that's what I've been doing for a living my entire life. So I think, yeah, it just all came together. And not only that, but like, you know, it's representative of a scene and a subculture that I've been covering very comprehensively as my career has been ramping up and as my audience has gotten bigger. So, and then of course, there's also the fact that like, I think people are, you know, hungry for bands that feel familiar, but don't, don't just exactly replicate yeah. what other bands have done. Yeah. Um, and because like we were kind of coming from a power metal, speed metal, doom metal, trad metal perspective like we ended up you know you made a stew somehow fucking exploding and it it doesn't really feel real it's it's still like very strange i don't know how i don't know how all those things happened <laughs> it's like yeah. i still like like when we we do a patch drop and i'm like oh we sold enough to pay for four days in the studio in a single day like that to me is shocking um but you know like i also because I've worked in the music industry for the last like 20 years, uh, we've kept like, I've made it so that I manage the band and I've kept all of our rights and I'm the one like controlling our merch and like those types of things. And like my husband's a graphic designer and you know, our, our bandmates, like Kevin is like a fucking phenomenal songwriter. Colin's a great guitarist. Our bassist Adam is just like incredibly talented bassist. And all of us are, you know, adults with jobs and stable <laughs> lives and that really helps obviously <laughs> because when you're a band with like a bunch of like you know 22 to 24 year old like drunks that makes being in a band a lot harder you yeah. know yeah um, yeah so, you know it's yeah. the 
It's the the the, uh, <laughs> the 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 dogs with jobs is always how I feel about myself. <laughs> I'm like I'm sort of like a dog with a job. <laughs> like, <laughs> I kind of come in and I do what I do, and uh, but uh, but I'm also a a, a a big dumb moron who just wants some big dumb metal. Um, See, that's how I feel too. It's like I'm a big dumb moron, but I've been yeah. working in the music industry yeah. since I was like 16. So, yeah. you know, like of course. Like, I, and I know that I, I've seen the criticisms that, you know, the people who really hate me have said about the band. It's like, oh, that fucking bitch only got famous because you fucking got, like, connection, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, yeah, that's not how that works. Like, I love how people think um, the music industry works. Every once in a while, someone's like, oh, who paid for this review? And you're like, fucking nobody. There's no money. Yeah. <laughs> I maybe serious. bought a bologna sandwich with them, them proceeds. Like, <laughs> but, like, you know, like, of course, I do have connections, right? Yeah. Like, but, like, certain things, you know, like, the fact that, Michael Whelan agreed to let us use his art. Yeah. Like that had nothing to do with my connections. That was me emailing him every yeah. month for like two years being like, please, 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 yeah. please, please. I know I need to have an album cover that looks like a fucking like thunder sword, like reminds you of rainbow looks like man of war, like something that, you know, and when that happens, it like really yeah. helps, you know, snowball all the momentum. And then like the fact that our demo sold out in like a day and then being invited to play hammer of doom and it's been crazy. Like there's been a lot of people who have helped us a lot along the way. And, but I do think it's because like, ultimately like we, we write good music. Yeah. And it's also the thing where I think a lot of people forget, like you don't make connections by sucking. <laughs> well, you also don't make connections by treating people like shit. Right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, you want to have relationships with people. You have to like, like I've spent the last 16 years doing favors for other people yeah. being like your band's sick. Yeah. How can right. I help you get a show? How can I write about you? How can I book you? How can I play you on my radio show? Like, and when you have 16 years of people being like, oh, cool. Yeah. You've helped me out multiple times. And I'm like, cool. You want to check out my band? And then they're like, oh, okay, cool. And then they listen to it and they actually like it. Then they yeah. have way more incentive yeah, to actually exactly. support it. You exactly. know, so it's like, and I mean, like if the know, band sucks, we wouldn't have gone anywhere. Yeah. So. Yeah. A hundred percent. And and I mean, like I said, we're talking about connections on the list. Fucking haunts up there, hanging out with Sammy Hagar, <laughs> Uncle Sammy coming over. So uh, uh, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, every band on this list has connections, right? That's like, the, yeah, that's, exactly. That's what that's what we do when we're like lifelong music industry yep. music yep. people. Like we're we're all lifers. So like, of course, like our music is getting further than it would be if we were just starting yep. out, but everyone starts out somewhere so hey, if that's I, you then start somewhere you know yeah, like yeah. Instead of bitching about other people <laughs> reach out reach out whoa yeah. true cult records with the thousand bits thousand bits for sarah favors really helping out there uh true cult records showing some love and yeah we oh, got yeah. some we got some definite love for 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 you in the chat so thanks again for coming out we're getting close <laughs> to the end yeah true cult records just really showing some love really kind uh uh you know uh yeah true thanks cult true records. cult i like you too and i like the cassette that you sent me a true time. a true pal yep yep uh uh true cult records keep an eye on my instagram in the next day or two um Oh, and also, yeah, if you're if, if anyone's buying anything from True Cult Records, don't forget to use the promo code GLOOSH for 10% off and a special surprise. <laughs> <laughs> and there's several uh, really good albums on True Cult right now. A lot like, of good albums. A lot of like good albums. epic black metal that you should yeah. go check out. Yeah. And also the... some sick black death. Yeah. And use the code GLOOSH for 10% off. <laughs> 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 <Got it. laughs> All right, so we're getting we're getting close to the end of the stream. We do have a, a list that's technically a little too full, but we can maybe check in on a couple things. Uh, is there anything essential that we haven't checked in on? We we actually went up with so much talk. We didn't mo really talk about Proto, but I'm okay with that because the job the job isn't talking about the bands that it that created new essential new the the, but, the role we're but doing we here. Could you know it would work if we just threw the um, in solitude the cauldron. And the skull fist in the proto. That's true. That's a, that's a little true. But those. But I mean, the timing doesn't feel right. You know what I mean? Like the years. I know it's, it, it's awkward, but yeah. We did have some. We did have some some d strong demands in the chat in the chat for uh for 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 slow fag and uh and. 
traveler. Yeah, traveler in the in the proto, um, which yeah. is which is a point well made. Uh, and you know, for for visual appeal, we should definitely probably we can toss we can toss a couple things in there. Um, uh, I can I can uh, I can get on the I can I can be one of those kids and get with the download and. Um, yeah, you should put Lord Rude Slaughfix Traveler in the proto. Yeah. You could also put Hammers of Misfortunes, the Bastard, in there. Although that arguably would be going into, like, the prog side. And then at that point, we might have to, like, also integrate the uh, bands that we were mentioning, Spell and Lunar Shadow. Um, but for proto, like, truly, that could be such a spectacular... Yeah wonderful mess of like i mean it, yeah it, that it's almost like that's a stream in and of itself <laughs> or we could we could we could uh talk about the fact that flip hat party thrash is like really what paved the way for for new wave traditional heavy metal yeah. Yeah. we could just put like you know all of those thrash yeah, bands just, it's just like, the the proto is just municipal waste <laughs> well and like lost horizons and uh gosh now i'm just blanking on all those bands that were like really big in the in the in the thrash scene in the 2000s there was more than that oh yeah we're we gonna put in morgul blades fell sorcery abounds into the good albums that's a yeah i mean it that's one that i didn't have included just because i was like this just came out and uh but i guess we are talking about a lot of stuff that did just come out um Love it, yeah uh and i mean i did really like the album i mean you know and uh and yeah that could go into the other albums yeah maybe we'll just we'll we'll, we'll we'll uh uh we can we can uh we can give it an we can give it a tip of the hat can you also give it a oh my god nice. can you also give a tip of the hat to um the uh solicitor record yeah i really i mean no you know another metal monthly record no big deal. and to the lord vigo now you're just now you're just abusing this privilege i've granted <laughs> bow to my whims <laughs> uh which lord vigo right the most recent one uh so they have a brand new one actually um but oh yeah yeah i guess there's a new one coming out in july yeah but i like dance de noir is the yeah. one that i like yeah. really was hey there true. you go there's a little there's a little goddamn space acknowledgement from sarah jesus took yes. a while took long like, enough for you I to like some space to, 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 to admit that space is cool I mean, yeah, we could also do Spiral Skies, Death is But a Door. That one's amazing. But the Tower Shock to the System, I think that yeah. record would be really good to do. Tower, it was a, I, that record didn't hit with me as hard as I thought it was going to. See, I think for me, what really hit on that album was the vocals. Like, she is such a spectacular vocalist. Yeah. Whereas the, the songwriting wasn't as exciting yeah. to me, but I think that like, it's, it could definitely get there. Yeah, for me, it was definitely. I listened to the record and I was like, "Boy, I wish she was in. <laughs> wish she about, was hanging out with some other dude." <laughs> what about Riot's Thundersteel? That's a proto album for that that scene. Okay, we've rounded up with, the list. We got some more of the rests. We got a little bit of. We got a little bit of the. Uh, uh, we got a. Whoops! Whoops! Oh God! Oh God! <laughs> dear lord what have i done dear lord what have i done uh i was trying to give the people a big look at it and it got big uh uh let's let's sorry give me one second folks we'll we'll take a, <laughs> take a dedicated look at what's going on here it's gotten a little out of hand in terms of size i'll resize it in this screen let's get a little we don't quite need that much going on that's a every, oh god every i'm getting out of this screen i'm getting out of the screen i oh god oh god oh god there we go all right i clicked into some weird places don't worry sorry sorry gang, sorry, gang. rainbow as a yeah so the rainbow i put slow fag and proto those were the slow uh, and rainbow in the proto because those were the yeah. two bands we really talked about kind of uh, as as you know yeah, both of them you know you you saying that's a that's a rainbow the the proto because the proto can go back the proto could be go back to the the history of music um Professional streamer, yeah, professional streamer. Professional streamer, <laughs> never, never an error, never a, never a slip up on stream around here. Um, so you know, uh, uh, here we'll get out of the way. We'll get out of the way instead of me going over there. We'll just get out of the way for a second so that you can, y'all can see where we're looking at so far um, with our list. Uh, we will have to move some stuff around because the list is a little, it's a little beefy. We 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 got to start getting in a subtraction mode instead of uh, instead of addition mode currently. 
But that's where we're looking. Couple of couple of records to acknowledge. Steel Wing, Steel Wing. Everybody go listen to Steel Wing. I can't believe I I can't believe I airballed with Steel Wing. Uh, that surprised me. Um, uh, proto cavemen rhythmically bashing on rocks. That's more for old school death metal. That's more the proto record for old school death metal. <laughs> um, but yeah. So uh, 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 what's okay? We've got some records. We've got how many do we have? Four, eight. 10, 12. We currently have 12 records sitting up here. Um, uh, uh, a couple of them, you know, Night Demon Portrait of voted in by the chat. Um, a couple. So we're going to have to trim two or we could trim more and add something different. Um, but we're getting close to the end of the stream and we got to get some scissor hands out. So uh, chat, in, <laughs> chat, in your opinion, they, they can go down to the rest. We'll still give them the nod, but in the essentials, what doesn't belong there? What, what, Sarah? Is there anything you you're seeing where you're going? Oh, maybe it's not so essential. Chat. What are you thinking? Uh, I'm trying to remember. Or... Yeah, Take I Night mean, Demon I... out from essentials. I wanted to do that, but I asked the chat, and the chat <laughs> voted Night Demon in. <laughs> you, you, y'all are giving me mixed messages. You're the ones that voted Night Demon to be in there. I'm not the biggest Night Demon fan. No need to kiss Night Demon's butt. They were voted in by you. <laughs> they were voted in by you. We're not kissing their butt. We were like, Night Demon's all right. And then everybody was like, no, Night Demon's sick. They got to stay in there. Uh, you'd cut Iron Griffin. They're real different. Uh, Iron Griffin is, maybe fair. they go in the rest. That's a fair, that's a fair kind of one. They, they, they it's, might be. It's a, it's a very, it's a very arcane feeling record. Yeah. And I think it's for like the, the dorks who are like, I really like Warlord you know yeah. like yeah. with their eyes like as big as saucers you know what i mean yeah. like warlord's wonderful i personally think they're arguably one of the best on this entire list yeah. but i also i'm a little yeah. specific about the my shit <laughs> yeah. how do you how do you uh, uh to you thanks for the follow um uh, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put something in the proto because I didn't talk to I talked about it a little bit Christian mistress I feel like yeah. kind of doesn't necessarily fit on the on the thing but feels like there's a there's boy there's a lot of times where yeah like I was saying you know you just you just hear her vocal impact is can't really I don't I don't think uh, uh, I don't think can be overstated I mean not not a band that it, it got enough love and really really don't know why uh, we don't have we don't like. Why? Why is why is Christine not in another band? I don't I don't know why she she has such an amazing voice. Uh, she's so fantastic and really kind of I think for me I, I feel like that was a big big foundation uh, a big breakthrough band and uh, uh, you know they they were on relapse uh, and just her voice is just incredible really unique and uh, I I feel like there's a lot of people that did, do imitate it uh, in a in not in a uh, bad imitation way but in shit a, uh, I just realized that we haven't even talked about Sanhedrin. We're supposed to be we're supposed to be. Shit. <laughs> Well, we're talking because I, I I did make a I made a very serious effort to like point out the fact that like women have really impacted the new wave of traditional yeah. heavy metal. Yes, and like Christian Mistress is a good point there, and like I think Sanhedrin, like yeah. obviously really good band. <coughs> oh, sorry, um, and yeah, like Sanhedrin would have been, but I mean, there's I, we could I could fill every square on this. Oh yeah. Part. Art. Yeah. yeah. So I'm kind I, look, of like, I'm I'm being I'm being a big boy, and I'm not, and I and I and I mentioned flight that we didn't, I didn't get any pulse from the chat on flight. You're not oh, a big flight, boy. right? Oh, flight. I love Gosh. that. Leap through matter is like probably just one of my most listened to records in general now. I since that I have not stopped listening to that record at least once a month since it came out. It's so weird. I love space and I love janky voices, and it's got both in abundance. Oh, uh, very voices are pretty good. I mean, there. I personally think that instead of Traveler, we could do Borrowed Time, because that was JP's band before Traveler. And we're not had... add, we're not adding, we're subtracting. <laughs> right, but Borrowed Time was like a very cool, I, and I should have brought them up earlier, because Borrowed Time like did some really cool shit, yeah. And like now all those guys are involved in like other bands that are really yeah. sick, and they're really a big part of the Lansing and Detroit metal scene. Um, and like they also, um, Victor runs Dystopian Dogs, which is like very good distro. Um, but I did want to shout out that. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God, we didn't even talk about Tales of Medusa. Oh no, and we didn't talk about it Atlantean Codex either. But I guess yeah. that they're a little too epic metal for like yeah. this whole list. 
I could just, how many minutes do we have left? Should I just name artists until the. Yeah, <laughs> just, just name artists until the sand the runs out of the, uh, the hourglass. The the uh, yeah, I mean, I, uh, uh, Kublai Khan mentioning that we didn't talk about Demon Bitch. Um, uh, oh, yeah. Which, which, which was definitely a, from that area, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, 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 that now now that's an album cover that is bad and i love it <laughs> that's if you're gonna give me a bad yeah. album cover give me a bad album cover like that that's a great album cover that's bad <laughs> oh i saw uh, demon bitch open for eternal champion in 2020 or 2019 i guess that was when we paid, played legions of metal we came home and drove through detroit and me and my bandmates and some of our friends we went and saw eternal champion at like this tiny bar for like a hundred people with demon bitch. And it was, it was a good time. Very good yeah. time. All right. D demon bitch is definitely, uh, uh, yeah, that was a, that is another, there's just, man, it's crazy how many goddamn bands there are that have released really great albums in like, Oh, well, I mean, I feel like we could probably years. put another like 20 or 30 pictures in there and it would still be accurate, you know? Yeah. No, totally. Um, uh, uh, yeah. Demon bitch. Again, it's just like, normally it's like some people are mentioning bands and i'm like no you just like that band but there's a bunch where it's been like oh yeah i mean we didn't talk about demon bitch that's another one that really that i'm, I'm gonna toss them in the rest i'm gonna toss them in the rest because we're as i said we're trying to prune we're not trying to we're not trying to add trees to the orchard here Wait, how got, many how many do we have to prune we got we got one more to cut out of the essentials cut skull fist to get to 10 yeah i feel like maybe skull, skull fist in the proto or no I feel like they're a little too, they're a little too, I mean, when did that record come out? That record was what, 2012? I don't 2014, know. Chasing okay, the Dream so, came out. Well, yeah, then no, put no. the Cauldron in the proto. Cauldron? That record is 2016. <laughs> oh, well. Just get an earlier Cauldron record? Um, yeah, just get an earlier Cauldron record. <laughs> the Cauldron's got to be in there. And it's then you so should probably goes. pull out the rainbow because it looks super weirdly out of context. It's 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 proto. It makes sense. It makes sense. I mean, the proto is supposed to be like the proto is for everything is Black Sabbath. Okay, so then let's just put uh, Chain to the Night in proto. Yes. Do you, okay. Here's here's if if it if it'll make your eyes feel better. Um, what's a what's a record in between? uh rainbow and slow fag that makes sense to go there that will help you f sleep at night thundersteel thundersteel by riot riot thundersteel now you can now you feel like now you feel like the the, the category makes sense a little bit more you're get you're getting what i'm putting down yeah well it's it's that's a fun record because also science fiction not in outer space but definitely on a planet another planet yeah uh for album artwork but that's like a speed metal power metal like rock and roll record yeah like a really speed metal power metal rock and roll record all right all right all right Fun. all right we we're, we're another one of those like all-time best songs like johnny's back oh what a great song what a fucking banger we were supposed to play with with riot in greece when we had all of our tour stuff fall apart and it was really sad because we were planning on playing uh the second festival like we were going to play um up the hammers and then we we're going to play this other festival called horns up in tricala and uh riot was like oh can you guys play like can you guys headline over us so that we can get back to you know athens for our flight and obviously everything fell apart and then their guitarist passed away from covid like immediately like days after or days before we were supposed to play with them and it was like such a sad yeah. like when we went home it was just such a sad like the saddest news to go home to and i mean riots now like it schismed into multiple bands but yeah makes me really sad that that never happened obviously because like he died very early on in the pandemic um before you know there a lot of could anything could have been done about it but uh yeah that was super shitty rest in peace yeah yeah i mean i mean rest in peace to everyone who's passed away in the last couple a, of years it's, it's been so it's good. been rough i feel like every time i'm like about to press go live on twitch it's like oh god damn no <laughs> trying to keep things like up and bright and it's like boom oh god yeah. no <laughs> uh. yeah 
and everyone's still pretending that we're not living in this like dystopian nightmare it's kind of weird <laughs> yeah, yeah. well you know i built a new deck so <laughs> <laughs> yeah i got a vintage geo shirt so everything's fine like yeah, everything's fine i got a new deck <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> so all right uh, uh 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 let's uh let's hide us for a second there you go there's a look at the list there's a look at what we got with a little ad playing in the corner um so proto the rest that's where we toss stuff where we think it needs to be talked about but doesn't quite fit in the in the core the legends we have eternal champion of visigoth and then you have your essentials uh, i feel pretty good about the list we made i feel pretty good about the list we made um uh, uh sarah how are you feeling about the list we made sorry I, I definitely muted myself it's good i feel like there's decent representation um and a nice like cross-section of music genres and like time periods a lot more could be added though yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, pa uh, Papa, Papa in the chat, and Painex Piss mentioning a uh, 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 um, Crip Sermon. Crip Sermon, that was a. Oh, but yeah. again, Crip Sermon is one that feels. I mean, it's not. It's yeah. It's a. It's a. It's it's a little more. It's a little more outside of the the the, the traditional heavy metal space. But so yeah. you know, uh, True Cult Records. Yeah, get Sarah back for traditional Doom Lockhorns. Hey, we do this. We do this every Wednesday. We do a we do a Lockhorns. Uh, you know, we 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 want you back as often as you come back. Uh, you know, uh, I know obviously well, the timing. It's like and, eleven <laughs> till like two ten a.m. in Helsinki. So yeah. um, you know, yeah. I'll just well, have to drink coffee or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just if 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 there's a Wednesday where you're vibing, Wednesday where you're feeling like getting turned, getting turned <laughs> on a Wednesday. No, I, I'm I'm very boring. I'm actually like pretty much sober. <laughs> just you like know, the only person in Finland who doesn't drink. <laughs> <laughs> Club going up on a Tuesday. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Um, uh, so we need to have a doom slash epic metal lock horns also waiting for a u.s black metal episode i mean the other Ooh. thing i was i was i was thinking that would be fun to do with you is I, I don't know i haven't reached out i don't know what i don't know what holder's like trying to get trying to get her into something but a holder holder sure. sarah uh 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 solo black metal lock horns wow. would be would, would be, be super cool would be super cool right yeah, I really, I really like what she's doing. I think it's really yeah. cool that like she's been embraced and her, oh, her riffs are fucking tight. Like, yeah, I'm all about that one person black metal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. as long as it's made by someone who's not an edge lord Nazi, because those people can fuck themselves. <laughs> yep, yeah, yeah. Um, we gotta, we, uh, yeah, we're getting some of the, we're getting some of the Holder emotes in the chat. Hell yeah, I got, I got a Holder <laughs> emote on my channel for you know. We've got a we've got a we've got a cute girl emote and we've got a cute boy emote. When it's when there's a cute girl pops up, there's the holder emote. When there's a cute boy that pops up, the old guitarist from Tribulation, because whoo whoo, heavens to Betsy, <laughs> it's a beautiful he's, man. <laughs> he's got that 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 very like I, I don't know if it's correct to say like heroin chic, like very thin, <laughs> yes, you know, yes, like yeah. very like vampiric. Yes. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's weird yeah, that now that they've gotten even more goth, the most goth one left. <laughs> yeah, but like Nosferatu. But, yeah, yeah. But with yeah. like Brad Pitt's face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, beautiful. There he is. There is the emote in the chat. There's the two of them. Um, he left, and your heart died, Phoenix Piss. I know, right? But I mean, at least he's doing his own thing. He's off doing his own thing. We're, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't lose him to the to like database management or something. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm a lab tech now. No time for metal. I'm just the world's most beautiful laboratory technician. Can you blame him? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I think I think we came up with a pretty good list. Uh, I feel pretty confident about it. I think we did good work here. As a reminder in the chat, uh, uh, Smolder, you know, obviously get the records, obviously support Smolder. But uh, uh, if you're if you are feeling in a supporty mood um the uh the the cool thing you can do is you can grab one of the new patches um because they just put up a bunch of patches to uh and the patches you are literally directly funding the making of their next record by buying one of those patches so uh, uh yeah. as i said it's like a kickstarter it's like an indiegogo but you actually get something for doing it <laughs> you don't have to worry and that you get some, a download that some silicon valley jerk off stole your money and went <laughs> disappeared um so uh uh Kind of how Pest, formerly of Gorgoroth, works an office job now. Yeah, he's, he, he just he just was like, I'm done, and disappeared. Yeah, yeah. 
Got the patches for starting a new battle jacket. Hell yeah, True Coat Records. Uh, Zilla Dill, the patches are sick. They are sick. They got they they got uh, all the all the all the albums in a nice little circle. All the all the records in a nice little circle. So um, uh, uh, definitely definitely worth picking up. Nice circle patch. Good, nice dynamic looking patch, but easy to stitch on. Not like my stupid patch with all those spiky edges. <laughs> yeah, I got an iron on back. No glue back. You, yours doesn't have glue back. No, it's got like um, they're embroidered. Oh God, I need to pick one up. It's like right, it's over here because I've been fulfilling them like all afternoon. <laughs> yeah, fulfillment hell. <sighs> like these, then they got that in the back, but they've got this embroidered edge. There you go, nice. And, and they come with edge. an album download, so that's good. Whatever patch you buy comes with the accompanying album download. And if you get all four of the patches, then it comes with Times of Seen Evil because we cannot attach a download to more than one album. So, oh, there you go. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> did not know. That. They're nice. They're a big size, and look at how pretty these ones are. And they're Gorgeous also almost patches. sold out. It's crazy. Almost sold out. So get them while you can. Fund a new record. Uh, you know, uh, uh, do your part. Do your heavy lifting. Um, <laughs> and yeah, that's. I mean, I guess that's just been the show. I guess it's. Uh, I guess it's sign off o'clock. Yeah, we need to we need to pop it's over to Twitch and figure. Three hours, good God! I know, right? <laughs> I mean, I told you it's like when you're like, oh, what's it like? I'm a little nervous, blah blah blah. I'm like, no, it's just we're just gonna press play and then we're just not gonna stop talking and you're accidentally gonna lose three hours of your life. It's funny because <laughs> bands sometimes are like, yeah, you know, I can maybe do like half the stream, you know, like Temple of Void guys were like, yeah, we can come in for some of it. And I'm like, yeah, totally cool. And then they're just here till the end. And then I, then the stream shuts off and they're still chatting. Cause it's like, if you just get someone talking about something they're passionate about, they will accidentally talk forever, <laughs> yes. which is what Twitch is for. Thanks for coming out to, uh, 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 to, to, to the Banger TV Twitch channel. As a reminder, we do do this every Wednesday and thursday lockhorns is normally on wednesdays but we switched them around so that we could get uh, uh sarah in and clearly it, what you know what it was it was the right move because y'all were as excited to see her as i was so um let's just uh who are we gonna who are we gonna tell hey hey matt skirfield's online let's give matt skirfield a raid he's he's off there playing some drums you know another one of the the nicest fellas on twitch uh, so let's toss in a raid. He'll play some heavy metal, I'm sure, when we get in there. Uh, so big thanks to everybody for coming out. Thanks so much, Sarah. As a reminder, grab a patch. Uh, uh, hopefully we do this again soon. Hopefully you can stay up past your bedtime in Finland <laughs> at some point. And, you know, you can you can show us a beautiful vista behind where you live. Um, uh, yeah, Papa Emeritus, Sarah needs to come back. Yep. Panic Spitz, great stream. Um, Chris, I, I, Blaine, you've had big Jeff Goldblum energy today. Oh, that's, I, I love that. That's definitely, as I'm like, as I, as I get older, I'm just becoming like more like gender blurred Jeff Goldblum uh, 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 for sure. That's definitely the, the, <laughs> the little hole I'm sinking into as I become an older person. Um, Panax Piss, great seeing Sarah on the Twitch channel. Hell yeah. Z Z Zilla Dilla, thanks for coming out. Hellion Angel Ripper. Uh, uh, Ghoul Nips, cheers, good show, thanks. Dark Lord Fabio, always a pleasure, folks. Looking forward to the next stream. Chris with some letters, with some goddamn hats. Uh, Hyava Yota, Sarah. I don't know. Hyava Yota. Hyava Yota. Hyava Yota. You gotta just learn how to speak Finnish, Blaine. Yep. It's not I just hard. gotta, whenever I see Finnish, I just have to like, the. I feel like the pronunciation is, if I just picture myself dressed like a milkmaid, it would just naturally come out, you know what I mean? You know, just 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 bring that big milkmaid energy. And hey, as we're about to leave, Dark Lord Fabio tossing a gifted sub over to Papa Emeritus. Very kind, very kind. See you next time. Gone. <laughs>